welcome to draft day. First episode in quite a while, you know, personal stuff getting in the way. It's a big, long, busy summer, uh, but we're back. We're going to have two drafts for you this month. This is the first of those two drafts, a draft I've been wanting to do for a while. Movie theater pet peeves. We love the theaters, some of us, uh, but you know, there are things that could be fixed and, and talked about, especially post COVID. So uh, with me to help me talk about movie theaters, uh, we have uh, one uh, person I like to call my sister, not really my sister, but she is my sister, Kelsey. <laughs> How's it going, Kels? Hi. Uh, great, Jill. There's nothing I love more than complaining about things I don't like. So I'm happy to be here. Great. Uh, things that you don't like about things you love, you know, uh, like when exactly. you complain about me. Um, so, uh, <laughs> see what I mean? Um, Live, laugh, yes. love you, Jen. And now my other sister, <laughs> who is actually my biological sister, making her <laughs> debut here on the channel uh, for a topic that she was very passionate to sign up for when I posed this draft originally on the Facebook page. It's Nina, Nina Randazzo, same last name. How's it going, Nina? Hi, good. <laughs> I'm excited <laughs> to finally be here and do this. Yes. Uh, we're very excited to have you and to talk about movies more. I, I mean, I was going to ask you all questions about movie theaters, but it would just kind of spoil the draft. So we'll, we'll talk about movie theaters in a second. Also yeah. joining me, uh, we have a co-host of the channel who is the co-host of Picture This. We have Chad Webb. Chad, how's it going? There's so many things that piss me off, Dill. You have no <laughs> idea. Let's yep. get into this. All right. Well, I can't wait to hear all the... Uh, very angry uh, things that you have to say about movie theaters, but also with a silver lining of how we can make it better. Cause that was actually something Chad posted to me in the chat uh, talking about it. He was like, I can, we can also say what we would change to fix it, which is a good way to kind of spin it in a more positive direction, which I like. Um, and then also joining, uh, it's a very familial episode. We have uh, my two sisters. We have Chad and Chad's wife, Carrie, Carrie, a favorite of the channel. How's it going, Carrie? Going good. <laughs> welcome, welcome aboard. I know you were hesitant at first about trying to find uh, essentially 25 pet peeves about movie theaters, but did, were you able to come up with a list? I did not come up with 25, but I came up with a few. <laughs> and hopefully go. we um, won't have too much overlap. Right. And if people take it, you know, we can maybe spin ideas off of one another and, and try yeah. to come up with a, a consensus. But it was hard to find a bunch of pet peeves, but we will give you 25 of them because that's how these drafts work. So as I said, we are drafting movie theater pet peeves. There will be five rounds total. A random order will be selected by wheel in just a second. The draft is snake, meaning whoever is the fifth pound fifth pick in round one will have the first pick in round two and so on so if you're the first pick overall you have to wait until the 10th pick to get your second pet peeve for this particular draft you must draft five pet peeves from any area of the movie theater this experience it can be from the parking lot to the lobby to concessions to the theaters themselves and of course the toilet afterwards you may not pick a pet peeve that relates to the movies themselves for example you can't draft ambiguous endings or bad acting performances as a pet peeve because that's really the movie's fault not necessarily the theater fault. So if you don't like Jared Leto in House of Gucci, that has nothing to do with AMC's chain. Uh, that is just your own personal pet peeves. <laughs> I was just thinking of one off the top of my head. Um, if anyone disagrees with the eligibility of a pick, though, they can veto the pick. If you think, eh, that shouldn't count, or if you think it should be more specific, um, that is another thing, too. Uh, you know, cleanliness can be narrowed down a little bit, something like that, for example. Um, you need at least three out of four votes to veto, though, in order to overturn. So if three people don't think it should be overturned, then you get to keep your pick. Um, but please do not mention or discuss uh I, this should say picks but films uh it should say pet peeves until they are drafted so don't spoil a pick because also some of us may not have thought of those picks so why would you mention them anyway because it might just tip a pick for someone else to take and then you don't get that pick anymore so uh i think we all understand the rules everyone here has either participated or been uh, a viewer of a draft nina i know you voted on several uh so uh we are going to spin this wheel here all five of our names let's take it away and this will decide the order so if you're, it lands on your name, you get to pick where you are in the order of the draft. So Carrie, it's going to land on you first. So Carrie, would you like to be first, second, Wowie. third, fourth, or fifth? First. First. Carrie's going to get the first pick. overall pick Good in the pick. draft. Love to see it. And it looks like it's going to be Kelsey. Sorry to everyone else. But congratulations, um, Kelsey. Where are you going to go, Kelsey? <laughs> Thanks. Um... I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna go second. I don't feel right. too pressed about the order because I think they're we're all gonna be very different. So yeah, it's gonna I'm be personalized gonna go second. by 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 person. That's what personalization means, I guess. All right, Nina, are you gonna go third, fourth, or fifth? I'll go third. Perfect. I don't need to change any of these windows. I love it. And then Chad <laughs> at the end. 
ladies first you know how it rolls and as the draft gods have had it i will be the last one to decide my order which means chad will be next chad would you like to go fourth or round us out well i know dylan normally loves to go fifth so i'll go fifth Okay, so look at that. I only had to change one of our windows this time. That's pretty wow. fun. So the first pick will be Carrie, second pick Kelsey, third pick Nina, fourth pick Dill, fifth pick Chad. So Carrie, you're on the board for your first pick. What is going to be your number one pet peeve of the movie theater experience? Okay, I think I'm going to do a shout out to a peeve I had when I was pregnant. Um, and I think it's still mm-hmm. just a generally relatable pet peeve. Um, no, it is. Um, so when I was pregnant I didn't have a lot of traditional morning sickness but I did have very smell trigger based sickness Mm -hmm. so like I would be making dinner and I would smell it from upstairs and just you know not it would not be good anyways I can't remember maybe Chad will remember what movie we went and saw I feel like it was Wakanda Forever it was Wakanda Forever yes Yep. Ooh, Kelsey you know, and I have pack, kind of forever experience as well. Which is a long pack, one, so. <laughs> yeah, pack theater, um, decent length movie, and the guy in front of us, and it might have smelled good, you know, any other <laughs> day. The pregnancy really, like, messed with my smells, but he brought in something, and he was, like, drinking out of it, but it was super something. <laughs> Horrible smell. So my pet peeve, in short, don't bring in smelly outside food. If you're going to bring in the outside food, make it like, you know, some candy or something. But That's that's a good one. I actually didn't have it on my list. That's why I love this draft. It's so personal. I I love that. I mean, I don't love that for you, obviously, (laughs) but I love that inspired choice. Um, Damn, that sucks. Chad, do you have anything to say about, about that experience as well? Did you feel the sickness too, or was it? No, I mean, I I believe I smelled it, but like it was one of those things where it's going to be like enhanced for her. She's like Daredevil, but with like real <laughs> smell. so yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I I want to say, yeah, I I've been guilty of this <laughs> before because <laughs> my AMC is right next to a Panera and a Chick Fil A. Uh, so oh, when Lord. I go to see movies with my buddy Landon, uh, Nina Kelsey, you know Landon. Um, uh, we Who? sometimes make a pit stop at uh, Chick-fil-A and uh, we do bring it in. But we hopefully, we try not to do it if it's like a packed house, you know. But yeah, I, I can see how that could be definitely annoying. Especially the mixture of smells too with other things that are already movie theater. Because movie theaters kind of have a signature smell. So it's like kind of the blending of all that. Ugh, yeah, great. Um, any thoughts on that, Kels? Um, That's great. That It's almost like a, one of those kind of rules. Like it's like the airplane rule. Like you don't bring in something really smelly on the airplane. Don't bring in something really smelly to the movie theater. It's the same idea. So I love it. Like it. Michael, Michael Scott bring or Creed brings like egg salad sandwiches on a bus. No, I actually think it's Oscar. Oscar. Yeah, I think it's Oscar. it's Oscar who brings the egg salad sandwiches and Steve yeah. and Steve Carell. Uh, Michael Scott's like, could you pick a smellier sandwich to bring? Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. Uh, Nina, any thoughts on smelly theaters yeah. or outside food in movie theaters? I've never had an experience where someone's brought like an outside meal. Like it's only been like popcorn and candy for me, but. I would definitely freak out if that happens because <laughs> it, it, I, I can just picture it and that's disgusting. Yep. Well, there you go. First pick off the board, smelly outside food. Kelsey, what is going to be your number one pick in the pet peeves draft? What pisses you off most about these sacred places we call movie theaters? Okay. So a lot of my picks are like really kind of like ha ha silly little like things that like I either do to myself at the movies or like whatever. This one bothers me to my core and it's not it's not like I'm saying this in like a funny or a cute way. This is something that makes me think of you as like literally a lesser human being than me. And as someone who works in the service industry, it's very important to me that we all like respect people who also work in the service industry. And it nothing pisses me off, grinds my gears more than when people get up from their seats and they don't take any of their garbage with them. And mm. they leave all of their garbage in the seat 
oh my God, I, I straight up, I clean up after them because I don't want the poor AMC worker to have to come and then clean up all their shit. Who, who raised you? Were you raised in a barn? You were raised to clean up after yourself? This is kindergarten shit. You clean up ass after yourself when you make a mess. And I, I'm not, you know, listen, I'm not saying you need to get down on all fours and start picking up individual popcorn kernels, but just gather your shit that we have a big, large popcorn. You just gather up all your napkins and all your stupid little candy wrappers. You gather them up in the popcorn bowl and you take them to the trash that is literally on your way out the door. There is no reason to leave your garbage behind in the movie theater. It, ooh, there you go. We got we got a Kelsey rant. I feel like we'll get many we'll rants from many people that. today. I agree, and I've <laughs> actually seen Kelsey go around to through the aisles getting people's buckets. That's the service industry for you. We respect your service, Kels. Um, is this an issue that any of the three of you deal with? Chad, Carrie, Nina, uh, well, people leaving their garbage behind. I mean, Do you leave sure. your garbage behind. I mean, it's happened. It's one of those things to where I probably might be one of those people, except for Carrie has made it a point to make sure that we pick up everything. So I think she's, you know, actually made that better. Um, I know that uh, very recently um, our, our friend Hunter, who was on the, in the trivia free for all, um, he works at a movie theater right now. And he sent us a picture when they had like the $4 uh, world cinema day or something. Days like and there's popcorn everywhere. And he was like, well, Yikes. I got an evening <laughs> set out for me. So. <laughs> Think of Hunter. Sweet, sweet Hunter. Whenever you go to the movie theater, you're making Hunter do extra work and have to stay there longer than he needs to yeah. every time you don't throw away your own trash. Don't do that to Hunter. Right. Yes. <laughs> and and just try not to. I mean, I guess this could be another pick, so I don't want to really spoil it. But, like, don't make the mess in the first place. That's all. Um, I agree. Carrie, any thoughts on, on this? On this one? Yeah, no, I 100% agree with this. And like, I don't, it's just like, I feel so bad because all of these movies, you know, especially if it's like an MCU movie or whatever, you know, you're there until the very end of the credits and the poor people who are working there <laughs> are just waiting for everyone to leave the theater. They have like only a short window of time to clean it in between showings. So like the least I could do is make it so you don't have to pick up my junk. Yeah. Yeah. Nina, any thoughts on the leaving the garbage at your seats? I mean, you work in the service industry as well. You're you're a candy counter girl, so how do you how do you feel? Yeah, I mean, I'm used to cleaning after the candy store every night, but I mean, I there have been times when I've walked to my seat in a movie theater and there was like popcorn all over the floor, and then little kernels get caught in your sneaker, and it's absolutely oh, just <laughs> I hate that. I hate that. I've, I've experienced it, and I being a germaphobe, I have I just. I hate this, and I think go. it's disgusting. Yeah. Well, that's why and, we wanted to have you on this episode, because you're a germaphobe, yeah. and I'm sure you have a lot of grievances <laughs> to air. So, Nina, you are the next pick. So what would you like as your first pick in this draft, as your number one thing that makes you most annoyed of the movie theaters? So there is one that should be my most, but surprisingly, I actually have something that really like aggravates me much, much more than the one that should be my number one. Okay. Um, and when Kelsey said the word get up, I thought she had my number one, but she actually didn't. So my number one is when people arrive late and make you get out of your seat so they can get by you. Ooh, yes. That's like, good. There have been so many times when I am watching a movie and I have to get up out of my chair and the people walk by and like I just get so angry to the point where I just want to yell at them. <laughs> that is my biggest number one pet peeve yeah. of the movie theater. And the thing is, there are people who are able to, like, you know, sli slither through where you can just, like, move your feet back. I don't mind that. Like, I don't I mind don't moving mind my that. feet back. It's yeah. just, like, getting up out of the chair. I get it. Especially mm -hmm. as someone who likes to sit on the aisle seat. Like, I, I always have to do that because I always get there early and I have to get out of my seat and all that. Um, that's a good one. I actually didn't have that one on my list either. You're getting some good ones there. Um, any, any thoughts? Chad, any thoughts on this one? Oh yeah. Um, oh, yeah. This, this is one of those things to where um, I think it just depends on like the theater you're at. I mean, there's really like no excuse I think to arrive that late really. Like if the movies are like into the movie uh, because you are, well, I don't know, at least for my theater, you have like 15 minutes of, of trailers. 
like like after the movie start like the showtime it's like 15 minutes after that so mm -hmm. you know it, it it's yeah there's not much excuse but then like i think it also just depends on like where you sit like i often will go to the dolby theater and those have the recliner chairs so i really don't have to like move that much for them to get by me because it's a little bit wider but yeah if it's a very narrow aisle or something it's very frustrating or you know and just like narrow aisles in general like if you have to you know get out sometimes it's you know, it's harder yeah. to do so i was gonna say I, I didn't want to tip a pick but does this include nina throughout the movie if they have to leave to go to the bathroom and come back or this is just like at the beginning of the movie for people coming late is, is should that be say, saved for another pick should i not say it yeah, well, I was thinking, like, people having to go to the bathroom and, like, slick by me is fine. It's mostly people arriving late. And not only if I have to get out of my chair, but watching a movie and, like, the people, like, near me having to get up and just people arriving late in general. Okay. Yeah. And just all of that. I hate yeah, it. No, it's the whole experience of that. Gotcha. Uh, Carrie or Kelsey, any, any thoughts on this one? I mean, this is a great number one. This is a great number one pick. Lateness in general is just like a huge pet peeve, like in my life. Like we all have a friend who is never on time. Like we oh, yeah. can all immediately think of someone and it just, it makes you angry to your core. And so, yeah, this is, this is really annoying because now you're like trying to get into the movie and now you're like all distracted by these people shuffling by. So, oh, big, great pick. Carrie, well, any thoughts? Yeah, I agree. Um, Chad and I are often the perpetually late friend, um, but movies we are <laughs> sorry, sorry technically before. That. No, it's I, it annoys me so much. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, movies we do actually get on time because there is that twenty minutes of trailers. It's like it's if you're yeah, they playing, like give you the buffer. They they give you yeah. We try to get it down Literally. to like science. We're like, all right, we need to be here between this time and this time. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Um, all right, so I'm off. And I have a story to set the scene here because I, I think right. there are like heavy hitter ones that are very like they're in the AMC ad. Like, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this. Where I think we can like we're going to pick those eventually, but like these, this first round feels very personal, you know? So I want to go personal and something that ever since this thing happened to me, I cannot kind of go to the movie theaters the same way. And I only go to certain movie theaters because of it. So this is very recent. Elemental came out, right? And I'm sitting watching elemental element, element, elemental. elemental. Jeez. I'm having a Kelsey moment. Um, I'm watching okay. Elemental. <laughs> Rude. <laughs> I'm kidding. Kelsey, you know what I mean. Um, oh, yeah, yeah I'm having, whatever. I'm having an elemental moment, and I'm, I'm mm -hmm. watching this short beforehand where, where Carl Fredrickson from Up is like going on his first date post wife divorce. Or, not wife divorce, death, sorry. Um, and it's very sad or whatever. But um, mm. all right, so this, this short is happening, and I just hear a screech and a scream from behind me in the theater. I'm like, what the hell? I was like, did oh, something good. scary happen? Is like, uh, is the fact that Ed Asner recorded this before? Is, like, is that some weird like meta? And then I find out it's because a mouse ran under someone's <gasps> foot at the Whoa. theater, and then they there. So it's me and one other couple. Like it wasn't. It was like a 9 p.m. on a Tuesday. Not a lot of people were seeing Elemental. It's opening weekend. It kind of had legs, so no one was really at the theater anyway. But so I turn around, I'm like, what happened? And they're like, there's a mouse. And I'm like, oh, great. So now I'm sitting in darkness. So we can't even see anything. That's another thing too. It's dark. So there's no way to like see if the mouse is under me. So I finally oh just like God. put my legs up on the chair. But for the whole hour and a half of Elemental, I could have left, but I wanted to see the movie. I have my feet <laughs> on the chair and it's so uncomfortable mm. that mm -hmm. I, I, like this is a bunch of pet peeves rolled into one. The darkness, the chair, whatever. But the mice is is what I'm drafting. I'm dra drafting oh, okay. mice. <laughs> mice is my pick because- the problem is once you see that the first time, and this is a, kind of a New York specific thing, I think because a lot of New York movie theaters are part of like these bigger buildings. So like it's New York, you're granted to have pests and stuff. So this might not be something that you get in your local suburban AMC um, or, you know, and like Nina, I don't think this would happen to mountainside, you know, but mm -hmm. the thing is in New York city, there's a lot of mice. That's a thing. Like when we moved into our apartment, I had to get, you know, the exterminator to come to, patch up some holes that were left when they added new appliances like it just happens it's the way of life but yeah. when you're in darkness <laughs> there's mm -hmm. like an added element of fear of mm -hmm. just and, and i don't even hate mice they just kind of like it's one of those things where i just don't want them crawling on my feet during a movie especially because you right. know how much shit is on the floor of a movie theater that they're attracted to the smells the stickiness the candy the juices the 
soda spills, the popcorn. Like there's a lot of ammunition Jesus. down there, a lot of temptations for those mice. And, you know, luckily I've never seen rats, but mice is definitely my number one because ever since then, every time I go to a theater, it either has to have a recliner. So I don't even have to consider the idea of putting my feet below with the demons or mm. i have to make sure beforehand i have to look and just check it out and suss it out i cannot go to that same amc theater auditorium anymore i go to that amc but i don't go to that auditorium i won't say which one it is i'll tell you off air kels because i think you're the only oh. one who goes to that theater with me but okay. i am really scarred from that and it's one of those things where every movie now i'm like constantly looking at the floor to just see if one's gonna run by and it's something I always heard about but never believed, and now when, now that I've seen it, I believe it, and it's it's traumatic. So that's my number one pick, mice. Uh, Chad, with a cat on your lap, I'd love to hear your opinion on this because I know. Cats are not <laughs> of mice. I mean, sometimes rats can make like really good kung fu masters, so I just I wouldn't judge a book. <laughs> sometimes yeah, they can cook because anyone can cook. That's true. That's I was right. gonna say it was just Remy Ratatouille. He wanted to see. He, he was gathering to see ingredients for his newest soup. He was like, "Oh, a butter popcorn. Oh, well, a little, I mean, a gummy sour patch." I do think this is a, but I, I love that it's like a very personal pick. That it's just like it's tied to like one specific experience that you had, mm -hmm. and that you don't ever want to, you know, have again. It's almost almost like if you're watching a movie with mice in it like the witches or something. And it's like a 4d experience for you. Oh. Um, but um, <laughs> no, but like, uh, even though I, I've never had anything like this happen, happen to me and I don't see it happening because it's like a very local thing for you. Mm. Although it could happen. Um, also like if it was, if it was like a, a mouse, I don't think I'd freak out because it, right. I don't, I'm not scared of mice, but if it was like a mm -hmm. spider or something, I'd be exactly oh. right there with you. Like, mm. yeah, See, stuff I don't like have a that. problem with bugs yeah. for some reason. I mean, mm. a specific type of bug, I'm not going to tip picks maybe, but like spiders, not really. I'm not like, you know, but I, I get that. Like having that one thing that it's like, if it's crawling around your face, it's the unknown of it. So it's like mice and the unknown yeah. of if they're there, you know, uh, sometimes it's scarier. Sure. That they're but there. But honestly, I, I could see if it was like, any other person, they might have just left. Like, um, Elemental's not that important to me. Um, <laughs> not worth the risk. It wasn't even started yet. It was, it was Carl's first last date. I was like, oh my god, this is sad. I want to cry for more than one reason now. Um, yeah. Because at um, first I thought it was going to be, please don't scream in the movie theater. And then I it mean, was yeah. like, I, yeah, I'm afraid of mice. A squirrel like, right. three <laughs> scream is, is a, uh, yeah, that's like a kind of a given, you know. But the mice, yeah, just... <laughs> it's a pet peeve of mine because it's like it just makes the whole experience it, it alters my whole experience on movie theaters but um nina have you ever seen a mouse in a movie theater i've not seen it no in the movie theater the only thing i could think of is like those tiktoks of mice in the subways exactly yes <laughs> yeah so that's the only thing that it reminded me of but i've never had knock on wood an experience like with the mice in the movie theater but i can Lucky. see how they would be in there and Carrie, any thoughts on mice? <laughs> I like to think I wouldn't be scared, but I probably would be. <laughs> it's okay. It, we, it's okay. We all get scared. <laughs> she would. She would say we're leaving, right? Yeah, she'd be like, "Peace out." <laughs> that couple, oh, they didn't leave. They moved a few seats up, and I'm like, "How is that going to change?" Like, you, you, well, it's it's this is all its ground. It's not like it, it's designated to that row. Here's Maybe. my thing, though, Dill. I feel like with mice, like they're definitely more scared of us than we are scared of it. So, like it, like we don't want it to be around us. The mouse really doesn't want to be around us. So if it gets by you, it's like, oh shit, I gotta go, and then it, you know, immediately takes off in a different yeah. place. Here's here's That's another thing, though. The mouse could have just been looking for its seat. Maybe it was late. <laughs> The thing is, Nina would not have had to get up, is what I'm saying. So yeah. true. That's Nina a very good point. Chad, that's a mouse. very that's good point. point. Uh, all right, Chad. What is going to be your number one pick? You're going to get two in a row here. Uh, yeah. But what is going to be the one to round out this first round? This uh, essential draft pick for you. So I have like two big issues. Um, one oh. is kind of like because I have uh, undiagnosed misophonia. So like sounds just really bug me, specific sounds, not every sound. Um, and uh, a lot of the times I, I get very distracted. So I think I have a lot of like attention issues as well. So I really, really need to be focused. Yes. And um, 
if there's something around me that's just distracting, um, I can't really handle it. And um, I'm going to go specific here. I'm not just going to go distractions. Yeah, no, that's, I'm that's drafting distractions. Um, yeah. So I'm going to go very specific because I think there's a lot of distractions like mice that um, could, you know, <laughs> Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. really take you out of the movie and yeah. just especially ones you can't cook yeah yeah and that's all you're thinking about i think most of the time and you can miss plot points and you're just like well now now i just have to see whatever that was at home when it comes out or go again mm -hmm. or something like that so i'm gonna go with my absolute thing that i had to find a solution for or I was just going to, you know, for at least the first 30 minutes have to worry about this all the time. And it's people eating, but mm -hmm. people, but specifically the biggest like movie theater food ever, popcorn. So eating, um, the sound of eating popcorn. Specifically crunching popcorn. Um, so crunching I'll just say popcorn. like crunching could be it. Oh. Because mm. it's not just popcorn. Sometimes it's nachos, but that's more rare. I wrote down on the draft board, sound of crunching popcorn slash snacks. Perfect. Because, yep. um, but it's mostly popcorn. It's like the thing where people will throw the popcorn into their mouths and like chomp it down really quick and crunch it. And I actually don't know how to do that. I don't know how people eat this popcorn like that. But Carrie can probably attest when I eat popcorn, I try to eat it as softly as possible because i know how it feels for people to annoy um but i also know that there's a lot of people that probably don't have this particular distraction like they're they ju it just doesn't come into their heads that people are right next to the eating, eating popcorn mm -hmm. um but it is literally the worst thing in the world to me in a movie theater if people if they just outlawed popcorn in general uh, <laughs> It would, I, I would have like almost zero problems. Um, so that's why I had to get this one. I'm glad nobody picked it, but I guess it's a really big personal problem for me. That's why no one picked it. Um, but I had to, um, actually, uh, get, uh, what, what does it carry? Earplugs. Earplugs. So they're like mm. plastic earplugs. So now every time I go to the theater, I have them with me. And if I don't, I panic and I have to go to the back to the car or, mm. Or something. Um, and uh, yeah, so uh, it's one of those things. If I hear anybody crunching around me, I immediately am putting the ear earplugs in. Um, and uh, yeah, and the cool thing is that those actually will block out most of that kind of stuff, like the stuff right around you. But then the sound system's so good normally that you can still mm -hmm. hear them for the most part. It's probably not as rich as if you didn't have those in, but sure. you know. It, Got a, got a Dolby or IMAX. It's still going to be rich, you know. Yeah, they, they really manage those well. Uh, Nina, I want to throw it over to you because I know this is also a personal thing for you. Um, what what do you have to say about uh, crunching popcorn? This is actually my third choice. Wow. Um, yeah, I, I, I specifically had you in mind for this draft for this pick because I was like, it's going to be Nina or Chad. Who's going to get that pick? <laughs> but to hear a third, I mean, it's still high. Wow. Up. It was a bit of a surprise. Yeah. Um. Crunching popcorn really loud does bother me a lot because I do have misophonia. Um, and it's there's been so many times when I've gone to the movie theaters and it's just really hard to, you know, only think about that, like, for a certain part of the movie. It's really, really hard. And, it, you know, I actually do have earplugs now from a doctor for it. So hopefully the next time I go to a movie, it helps. Um, but, yeah, it's just... Uh, it's one of those things that I just can't stand. And even during like quiet parts of the movies, like it's, it's really bad, but yeah. Yeah. I'll also group in with popcorn and snacks ice as well, because our, our father, Nina is, is a big uh, uh, proponent ice of eater? after, after the drink is done. Yeah. Like having something to chew on. Cause you know, essentially like humans, a dad we are, thing. We are trained, yeah. we are trained just by habit to, always when we're we have a screen in front of us be munching on something or snacking eating on something. yeah it's like a snacking thing so like when your drink is done you know rather than get up and get another one which you can do nowadays because of the freestyle machines like you know sometimes you'll just get the ice but there there's another element to the ice too it's it's the shake of the sound of the ice going oh. out of the cup and then the chewing 
Um, so it's like it's it's the double on top of that. Which that our, could our be dad a dick does, on itself. There's the shaking of the a shaking cup. Of the ice. Yeah, I guess that could be. So we'll save it for wow. if anyone wants it. But no, I, I get what you mean. You know, it's it's a lot. It doesn't bother me as much as it bothers you too. But I, I definitely see uh, that point of view. Kelsey, have you ever thought of that? The the crunching of the popcorn, or are you um, a, are you a shoveler? Oh, I'm a shoveler. I, I'm I shoveling. Could, Chad, I wanted you to say it because we I should you never to go to the I know you're together. a shoveler, and I didn't want to out you, Kelsey. <laughs> okay. I didn't want to out you, but I wanted you to be the one to admit it because I didn't want to be like, well, guess who here shovels their popcorn? That's that's the thing too, is that because I know when people are doing it, they're just watching a movie and eating. They're not trying to piss me off, but right. in my head, I get this. Or it's like a phobia, misophonia, phobia, whatever. It's like yeah. It's like literally I'm thinking that people are doing it just to go against me. And so mm, I get really right. angry at people. Yeah. And then I'm like, and Carrie's got to be like, Chad, stop looking at them. Look at the movie. Right, you like give right, them like a right. hard stare. I'm just like, <laughs> oh, that's like, tough. Whip around, you know. <laughs> no, it is I'm an a, outright I... like layer wow. i can't convey like the hatred in <laughs> it's gotten much better since i've gotten the earplugs and i hope they work for you nina thank you <laughs> i just right. had a follow-up question chad um do you then eat popcorn like one at a time no um but i'll just i'll put it in my mouth and then i'll like close my mouth and then i'll eat the popcorn <laughs> okay that's, that's so you're not like goes. That's no, and that's how I <laughs> eat chips as well. Same way. Okay, Kelsey, I don't think you go as far as um, um, I. You're not I don't think I do that either. But it I would definitely fall out your like mouth. Hefty. Yeah. No, you're you're like a, you know, I don't know. We'll 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 examine it next time we go to the movies. You'll film okay. me, and then the next time we we're go after that, I'll film you. But yeah, don't tell. We'll do a case study on this. Each other where, if yeah, you can exactly. go soon, clip it into this video. I could try that. That'd be fun. <laughs> um, I don't know if that'll happen, but maybe. maybe. I haven't gone. And then warning for like, you know, a ADR. Yes, or yes, whatever. Yes, yes. Exactly. All right, yeah. Chad, you get another pick now, though. We're going to go snake back around. So what would you like your, oh, yeah. uh, your next pick to be? So this is another very specific one, um, but I think it's common enough. And it, this one actually might annoy more people um, than the specific, but it's another sound issue. Um, but it's specifically when someone, I guess normally also because we go to a movie theater that's near a mall, um, oh, people have right. like some sort of like plastic bag and they're just mm -hmm. fucking with it the whole movie yeah. or at least a, a large portion yeah. of the movie. Yeah. They're crinkling something or maybe it's even like a candy that they bought, but instead mm -hmm. of like pouring a bunch into their hand and eating it that way, they're just like crinkling the bag the whole time yeah or just a plastic bag that they're digging into or i don't know if like sometimes like women have purses that they just got plastic stuff in there and they're digging in there i don't know but all i know is i hear the sound and i'm just like what are you doing like why, yeah. why are you messing with that for so long like it's not like a second like you're grabbing something real quick but i don't know it, this this happens enough that i'm bringing it up Oh, it is a thing. Yeah, I agree with you. That was high on my list as well, Chad. Okay. Um, so much so that we're like theaters, like live theaters are doing a thing now where they say, please unwrap all candy before the performance starts. Yeah. Because they don't want to hear every time, you know, there's yeah. a silent moment. So I, I get that. Um, Nina, as the, the uh, fellow uh, other misophonious uh, person, I guess that's the way to say it. Um, how do you feel about crinkling wrappers? Does that annoy you as well? Or is it more of a chewing thing? It's way more chewing, but I mean, I I could deal with the sound of plastic, but especially during a movie, if someone's crinkling their candy wrapper, it will annoy me, but it doesn't annoy me as much as chewing. So I didn't have this on my list, but it definitely, I could see how it annoys Chad. Yeah, the, the chewing is the actual like physical response that I have. The, yeah. This one's just annoying. This, yeah. this one I don't think mm. is as related to the misophonia. Yeah. Um, Kelsey, any thoughts on crinkling wrappers or bags? 
Yeah, uh, this is definitely annoying. I mean, I I didn't think of this one, but you're you're saying it, and I'm like having a, a physical reaction <laughs> to like all the times that I I'm remembering all the times that this has happened in the theater, and I just like when I go to the movies, like I try to make like as little noise as possible, except obviously when I'm shoveling popcorn into my face, I guess that's pretty loud, but. Otherwise, like, I barely even like to get the candy out of, like, my box or my bag mm -hmm. because I don't want to disrupt anyone else's. It just makes me think of, like, huh, some of these people out here have never had anxiety a day in their life because yeah. I'm out here riddled with it. And it makes me want to <laughs> be so, like, small and appeasing all the time. Just, so anyway, just... we'll unpack that later. <laughs> <laughs> just act like you're seeing A Quiet Place, all the every movie. Right. Exactly, exactly. Right, like a monster's going to attack you. Um, <laughs> Gary, any thoughts on the the wrappers crinkling or the bags? Yeah, I'll say, well, especially since, like, you know, dating and marrying Chad, I notice no noises like this a lot more, especially the chewing. Um, the chewing, like, I will say, like, has an impact on our daily lives, his chewing aversion. <laughs> um, because it's her, too. Yeah, oh, yeah. So, mm -hmm. um, but the, <laughs> the right. plastic wrinkling, yeah, I like, I purposely, I hate that they package candy in a way that it's like specifically it's for a movie theater. It's being sold in a movie theater, but it's like this little plastic thing you have to unwrap within mm. the cardboard. Mm. It's so loud. And I try to mm. do it like a really loud moments in the movie. Yeah, right. So it's yeah. not quite. Mm, yeah. As loud. Yeah. You're playing that game. To be like, oh, there's gonna be an explosion. Gotta get my M Ms. The best though, the best though was when I saw Oppenheimer. Because for those who have seen it, the explosion it mimics like thunder and lightning. How you see mm. the blast before you hear it. So, it's terrifying, by the way. That's so, scary as hell. It is scary, but some person <laughs> thought, oh, good. There's gonna be an explosion. Let me unwrap my hands. <laughs> <laughs> you just hear it's silence. You just hear. It. <laughs> it's like and everyone turns around and looks at the guy, and he's like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I saw the mushroom cloud. I thought it was going to be much louder. <laughs> and then like five minutes later, you hear the boom. And the guy's like, there it is. that's when I can unwrap it. Uh, all right. Wow. I got to take a pick here in round two. And this one is so specific, but I'm sure everyone can relate. If you are a frequent solo movie goer, I know Chad and Carrie, you always go together. Um, I've gone frequent. alone before. Yeah, so, so you know the feeling of when a theater is almost empty, but someone still sits next to you. Oh. I think it is the most annoying thing. Listen, there are a lot of seats in a movie theater, and I get you may want this specific area of the theater, but like, give me a seat between me and you. Yeah. Like, yeah. this is not a blind date. This is not like a pack. And if it's a pack sold out thing, I get it. Like, if there's a few empty seats, it's fine. Like, I get it. I'll I'll brush up my my arm against yours. That's fine. We're not gonna hold hands, but it's fine. You can sit next to me. But if there's like ten people in the theater. And there's 400 seats, let's say, and you decide to sit next to me. <laughs> I mean, and, and granted, nowadays, it's like you do the reserve seating. So, like, that's even worse. It's like you literally saw on the seating map that someone's sitting there and you consciously bought the ticket next to them. I don't know. I can't deal with it. Uh, is this a thing for anyone else, too? Or is this only a me thing? Yes. Yeah. yeah. yeah this is on my list as well. Not my top five, but it was within the. Yeah, Man, it's, yeah the worst. It. it's the worst. And and then you feel like oh uh, you're you're in someone else's space. You're like, you need yeah. to be courteous to them. It's like, why? You were there first. Like, why should I be like, oh shoot, let me give you more room on the armrest? Sorry, I'm taking up too much room. It's a 75-25. Let's make it a 50-50. Like, why is that my job now? I don't know. Right. Um, yeah. Well, Dylan, I mean, do you at that point move or do you go, well, I can't move because this is my assigned seat? There's two problems with that. If I move, I don't want to come across rude. I don't want to be like, oh, you're sitting next to me. I'm yeah. going to move. Because then how would that yep. feel if you were that person? Like, now now that person's like, oh, shit, do I smell? Do I, you know? The I'd other be thing, like, though, Bill, what the hell, dude? Right. The other, yeah. <laughs> the, other, <laughs> the other thing is with assigned seating, who's to say if the one seat I decide to sit in ends up being next to someone else who hasn't come in yet. Like, that's the big danger yeah. of assigned seating. It's like, right. if it's five minutes, like, into trailers, I might be like, okay, let me move. But, like, if it's, 
not if it's if Nuvi's still on, then like I don't know yet who's sitting elsewhere. So like, how am I supposed to know? And sometimes I like pull up the seating chart to be like, is there somewhere that a lot of people aren't sitting in I could go to? It's a big mess. Like just yeah. be if if you see only thirty tickets are sold in an hundred seat theater, don't sit next to the couple. Sit a seat away from them. Um, I don't know. It's just I don't know. There used to be no reserved seating, and it was just chaos. Right, but but then again, I slightly prefer that if it meant that i could just like have some space but i don't know right especially with covid stuff it's like i don't want a stranger sitting right next to me especially if they are shoveling their popcorn or you know like coughing or you know, sorry i don't want to list off too many things but you know what i mean um and i've actually i've never had it happen so it, you know you oh. didn't ask but I, I didn't have it happen. oh sorry has anyone else had this happen to them this Lena happened yes. to Kelsey's me like, recently um, when i saw talk to me in theaters oh. And I went with me and our friend Alex Frisch and we went to a late night. It was like a Thursday and it was late. It was at the AMC in Times Square. So it was like a really random time. The theater was like had like max like 15 people in it. And like so like we kind of just like our the seats that we were assigned to us like one of the armrests was broken. So we were like oh let's just like get go to a different row because this theater is empty. Like who's going to be bothered. Yeah. And then the, huh. the two guys came whose seats it were. And they were like, Oh, uh, we think you're. And then we were just looking at them for so long that they eventually just gave up. And I was like, <laughs> dude, like, I'm so sorry. Just like pick a different seat. <laughs> There's yeah. this theater is empty. You could have yeah. a better seat in the row right in front of us. Do and they sit so down they, right next to you? No, they didn't sit down next to us, but they literally almost made us like move, which I maybe I guess we were more in the wrong, but it was just like so weird. I was like, a little bit of a definition because it's like you were in their seats, but it's like if they had put their two next to yours though and then sat down in an empty seat, like that's what I'm talking about. I'm like, why of all these seats did you want to sit right here? That might be her next pick where it's like when you steal someone's seat and they're getting (laughs) mad at you. That pisses me off. Okay. <laughs> when you steal something. That's funny. Yeah, um, just like go with the flow, dude. Um, no, and that for that movie too, it's like you don't want to sit next. I mean, I guess maybe in horror movies, it's scarier if you're further apart. Oh, like because when I we saw were Skinamarink, clinging on to each other. When I saw Skinamarink, I was over here, and then the other person in the theater was over there, and it was like <laughs> it was scary. No, I think um, that's kind of worse. Yeah. I don't so like that. You have to find a happy medium is, is the, the thing. But and that's then, my like, point. If the lights go out and then they're suddenly closer to you. <laughs> no, yes. nope. Oh, my God. Wait, I just thought of a new pick I'm adding to my list. Hold on. There you go. Um, oh, my. <laughs> okay. Because that brought up a brainchild of mine. I'll share an honorable mentions if I don't pick it as part of my five. But anyway, Nina, you're, you're the next pick. What would you like as your uh, second pick in this draft? I'm actually shocked no one has said this yet. This I was really between this and one other one. For my number two, but I think this just annoys me more. And it doesn't have to be like, like, even if they do it quietly, it annoys me so much. And that is talking or whispering during a movie. Yeah, yeah. that's a pretty mm, classic. Basic, but it, I, classic. Up for me too. Yeah. it has happened just too many times. And like, even like a light talk really, really annoys me. Like, mm-hmm. and a whisper, you can just hear everything. And mm. it just ruins the whole movie. Yeah, there's a difference between like cheering for something like or clapping versus exactly. like yeah. Like the best one is uh, if you go to the bathroom. What did I miss? Like I hate that. I, <laughs> yeah. That has happened which, too. Which much. granted happens. Like I get it, but it's also like, uh, like come on, like you know, it's two hours. Hold it. Or I don't know. That could be its own issue. But um, another one I love is is when a trailer is happening and someone's like, I want to see that. <laughs> It's like, yeah. thank you. Thank you for your commentary. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, it looks like it worked. <laughs> the advertisement worked. Um, any other thoughts on, on talking during a movie? I mean, well, that's like I, kind of the standard, but I wanted to comment on the thing that you just said. I remember when I saw the, the movie, the trailer for the movie dread mm. when I was in the, th- in the theater, I went, that looks fucking dumb. And then the people behind me were like, did he just say that looked dumb? <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> But in um, trailers, it's a little less egregious because like talking like, specifically, yeah, it is. It's a really big problem. Um, I don't know why people have the gall to think that they can just do that. They just don't care about others around them, and it's yeah. just like you're not at home. You're in a theater now. Everyone else has paid 
probably about the same amount of money that you've paid to be here. And they're not here to hear you talk. They're here to watch, hear other people talk. That's the whole point of a movie. Unless it's Skinamarink and then maybe no one's talking. But yeah. um, also don't talk during Skinamarink. Um, yeah. But I remember like one specific thing that pissed me off because it was people talking literally the whole movie. Because I know sometimes during horror movies, people will do that. Like they'll be like, all right, it's a horror movie. I can have more of a reaction and I can talk a little bit too. It's not just reactions, but talking a little bit. Right, um, like commentary. About, yeah, but I remember specifically, and I think this is also a horror movie, but when I went, Carrie and I went to see Spencer, the Kristen Stewart oh, yeah. film that oh. I really, really love, by the way, mm -hmm. people in the theater, I don't think loved it. And they were there just to make fun of it. Maybe they don't like Kristen Stewart. or I don't know. They were just taking the movie not so seriously at all. And they were just like joking the whole movie. And this is not a comedy. No, so not at all. I don't know. No, you can't spin like, it to be a comedy in any way. <laughs> yeah. So it's just one of those things to where, and I agree with Nina, if you're whispering, if you're talking, it, just re it really doesn't matter. Like if it's like once or twice, I can see it. But if it's just a lot, if, if it's frequent, right. you know, and, and I know for me, I just, I want to say something, but Carrie will not let me. <laughs> no, no. Any, any thoughts on what Chad just said? <laughs> yeah, very non-confrontational. So <laughs> makes me nervous. Um, yeah, it, it is really annoying. In some movies, it's like kind of fun and expected. Like, I actually love going to see kids' movies and the kids in the theater oh. like <laughs> making their little comments. Like, yeah. Can I can I add the specific? Because okay, so we got drunk and saw Paddington too. Um, nice. And then when uh, I think it was Paddington too, when he's climbing the ladder to like wash windows. Um, I remember there was one kid behind me that was like, oh, oh, and the ladder like gets kicked away or something. He's like hanging off the ledge or something like that. The one kid behind me was like, now what are you going to do? And I was like, that's yeah. a good point. <laughs> kids are fun. Yeah. Fun. Kids are fun. I, that that kind of commentary doesn't bother things. me. Yeah. Um, yeah, but uh, no, I, I totally agree. Um, what was, oh, I was just about to say something along those lines. I forget. Anyway, anything else, Carrie or Kelsey, to add to that? Or I, I can't remember what I was going to say. Well, Dill, we have the most infamous. Oh, that's what I was going to say. Yeah, during Black, a movie. Black Panther. Black Panther. That's right. Was that's Black Panther was Wakanda forever? And it was so bad. It's not even just you were talking during the movie. It was they were talking during the whole like memoriam. For her like, first ten minutes. Like yeah funeral sequence oh, wow. for like Chadwick Boseman and, and like you know like his his like his death like the Black Panther is like the is whole very death. quiet at that point it's very quiet it's exactly. very muted and like it's very somber and you just hear these guys being like hey, yo did you get the hot dog did you get the nose so oh, yeah. yo, bro, no. pass me some pass me some sour patch kid I don't know <laughs> why I went so much so so <laughs> they were like so they were like 14 alone? year old white kids but I, I don't know no. <laughs> And it's just like so annoying because I have so many issues with this because it's like, you know, Chadwick passed in real life. Like he deserves some respect. And also like this is an MCU on like movie on opening weekend. Like there's some pretty intense fans here that like want to like take this in. And three, just don't talk during a movie point yeah. blank. Well, it was a combo anyway. of all three things we've talked about. They were late to the movie. They made people get out of their chairs. They were talking while uncrinkling their wrappers and stuffing popcorn in their face. Like, it was all of it combined. And now they that we've all just... brought all those picks up, we can now talk about it all in the tandem. But, like, that was the <laughs> added recipe of just awfulness. Yeah, so that's... that's yeah, cool. I remember specifically also during MCU movies, it, it seems like a pattern. Because I remember when I saw... Um, and we're getting a resurgence maybe soon for movie pass. But during movie pass days, I once saw um, Black Panther. Um, and uh, I remember it was like every joke, the person behind me would then just repeat the joke. <laughs> and like like you know, Paulie Walnuts from Sopranos. Hey, get what? it? Because he said this. Yeah, <laughs> like, something no. like that. So, get uh, it? Because the chicken's crossing the road. <laughs> and I'm like, it, it just it makes the movie less funny because you're yeah. you're ruining right. it <laughs> get it because when the money came down he said he made it rain <laughs> that's that's exactly what Polly walnuts did that is <laughs> that is so funny uh, awful but funny uh kelsey what's gonna be your second pick here in the draft oh it's my I caught turn. You off guard okay. sorry you were... 
Sorry, I've been um, trying to untangle this necklace like desperately for like a week now. Okay. Um I'm okay. There's one that like specifically happens to me, but uh I I don't I'm not worried about anyone taking it and it's going to be my turn soon again. Um Okay. Okay, I think this is going to be my number 2 pick because oof, this 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 bothers me. And it has nothing to do with anyone else. But, like, first I want to pose a question to the group. Um, do you guys put butter on your popcorn? Yes. Yes. Okay, so we're all butter people. So we all might no. understand. So, obviously, and it, I'm not going because I just thought of something else that, oh, my God, this would have been so much better. But, anyway, so we all you pick put, it. You haven't said the pick yet. No, I know, but I'm going with this one. And I'm okay. going with my original. Anyway, so we all put up butter on our popcorn, right? And then, you know, we're we're eating our popcorn. But then I just hate how buttery and greasy my fingers get. And now I'm trying to eat my candy. And now my candy's getting greasy. And so I have the, all the napkins. But then eventually you run out of napkins. And I just, mm. Mm, I don't like it. So is the pet peeve butter or is it yourself? For <laughs> or, or, is it uh, like, think, or is it just like not having enough napkins? Like what is the pet peeve? Just buttery the hands? The pet peeve general? is how greasy my hands get okay, when i hands. when i had yes when i put butter on my popcorn but you got to put butter on your popcorn because that enhances the popcorn experience do you want the I, butter to be a different consistency no no she wants all the pleasures making me of feel the, bad the about my the, pick no she she wants all the pleasures of the popcorn butter just without the detriment just without the the layer of sleek grease it leaves yeah. on my she paws. She just doesn't like, doesn't like the aftermath. She, she loves and if, the act of it. It feels like you can't even like wash it out sometimes. You're just like, when will yeah. my hands ever be clean again? And well, then you're also, picking up your soda to drink, and now your soda's covered in grease. Well, they also, if you're an old bag person, that's right, that sounded bad. <laughs> no, you, you'll, you'll know what I mean. If, if, before AMC made it like buckets only, when they were large, well, I guess they have the, the meat, the regulars are bags still, but when they had oh, bags, that's... like, it would seep through the bottom of the bag too, and it would get on your pants. And yeah, oh, I have a right, butter pet peeve right. that I'm not going to bring up because I might draft it later. But it's it's different. But butter has a lot of. I think I know what it is, still because I thought of it as well, my sentence it, um, went. Any thoughts anyway. on, on messiness of butter? I hadn't thought of this one, but it's, it's a good one. It's Nina, any thoughts or chat? Oh. Yeah, I was just going to say it's very specific, but I think it's interesting because like. I'm like, because you were making, you're making like a joke, like, you know, are, are you the one that pisses yourself off? But then it's like, I mean, that still is a, even though it's well, like, you should be it, able to enjoy your butter. Yeah. Like it makes sense that the butter does that, but like, I, I get it now where I'm like, Hey, I hate when that happens, even though it really can't be fixed. Right. It doesn't I, matter. It's self-inflicted. I it get is a movie the theater butter. pet peeve. It's something that annoys you, but it's not yeah. necessarily the movie theater's doing. But it is still something that can annoy you, and it's fine. Yeah, I, I like it. Fine. No, we hate this pick. Let's just no, move on. no, it's no, awesome. no, Kelsey. It's a good pick. It just I'm I'm trying to think. Is it like something the movie theater is actively doing that pisses you off, or is it something that happens at the movies? But talking is not something the movie theaters do. It's something people do at the movie theaters. So that's, that's something different. they can fix, though. Yeah. But this right. is something they can fix. But still, it's a it's a problem. Yeah. I mean, they could just give you like. What if they gave like a, a a thing of napkins permanently? Like, I guess that wouldn't work. What if they like, gave you like a little um, tongue? Like a little wet, wet naps? Dip a piece of popcorn in it. Oh, like <laughs> dipping <laughs> butter. <laughs> Like you just butter dip butter. each individual piece. <laughs> well, you know, Nina, that wouldn't work for me because as we've discussed, I'm a shoveler. So, so you just have to take I a handful of popcorn, dip it in the Never mind, water. never mind. What if you have like a little shovel, like a tiny <laughs> little shovel? <laughs> a and tiny the shovel, shovel itself has butter on it. And then I just I take the butter and I do it, I drizzle drizzle it a little bit. Okay. Shovel it go. in. We're okay. working up with some good solutions. No, Kelsey, it's a good pick. And and I agree. I hate buttery hands in a movie theater. Because also, when you're on a date, you Thank can't hold you. hands if your hands are all freaking slimy. You with can. As well. It'd be really sexy if you did it's, that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think mm. it would. Um, maybe. Nature's um, lube. Butter. Yeah, any, oh. Okay. All right. Uh, PG. PG. Sorry. Actually, just kidding. Fuck, fuck it, you fuck. Um, this Carrie, stuff. any thoughts <laughs> on, on buttery hands? Sorry. Yeah, I I feel this one. It it's just like it's just the downside of enjoying the popcorn. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nina, any thoughts on you, buttery hands? It annoys me. Yeah, I I mean I've had that before where I'm trying to eat my candy and it's just disgusting. Yeah. 
Everything mm. is disgusting. All right. Um, <laughs> no, just I'm just talking about this. I'm like, wow, there are a lot of disgusting things about movie theaters. And yeah. It's so enlightening. But All there's right. always a fix. Always a fix. Carrie, what is going to be your? You have two picks now. What is going to be your last pick of the second round? Oh gosh. Um, well, speaking of disgusting things, um, <laughs> let's just keep on that train. Um, that. And this is something I feel like it's kind of a general pet peeve. But I think it's specifically a problem in every single AMC theater I have been to. Um, Nicole Kidman? You know, what? No, <laughs> no, no, Chad. <laughs> Nicole Throughout Kidman. the state of Maryland, we've been to AMCs, like, I think in Philadelphia. I feel like in other states at some point. I have not been to an AMC that has, like, a decently clean ladies' room. Ah, I was thinking that of that. That was one. on the list. That's a really that was good. on the list. Wait, chat. Wait, 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 wait. I haven't been in the ladies' room. To be clear, I'm oh, talking okay. about the restroom. Restroom, right? Say, you know, yours is is this taking all restrooms off the board, Carrie, or just specifically ladies' room? Um, well, take I mean, bathrooms. Take it out from under us. I think I think you all bathrooms. All right. So what bathroom are, what cleanliness. Are you complaining is about there. specifically like the sticky floors? No. So. It is like, especially in our local AMC, it is just like a tour to try to find one bathroom that it doesn't still have stuff in it, is not mm -hmm. completely clogged up, mm -hmm. has toilet paper, doesn't have anything on the seat. The door actually works and locks. And I'm going to say this is, I don't, I don't blame the employees, right? Like, what a horrible job to clean up. It's still part of the job, though. But I, I'm going to say, be but it's not. Yeah, you're neat. right. Be neat when you use this in a people, public People restroom. can help it. People can help the employees, but yeah. drastically, drastically. Help me help you help me. Yeah. It, or like, the, you know, management could try to fix the you know door broken door that's been broken for three years. You know, <laughs> right, right. Just like the duct tape on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I do think that could be seen as more of a specific a women's restroom problem because I, I rarely have to go into a stall at a movie theater, but yeah, it's it, possible. It, it, men's bathrooms, at least from my end, are, are also not the most well-kept. But Look, if you all want to take men's bathrooms specifically, that's fine. Uh, it wasn't on my list, so so you can you can have it. But I will say, Kelsey, I don't know if you've been to the AMC Kips Bay. Yes, you have. We saw Doctor Strange there. Best movie theater bathrooms ever like that that amc itself is great it has the recliners and everything but like those bathrooms if y'all are ever in AMC in, in new york city amc kips bay i think it's like 15 amc kips bay 15 has the nicest bathrooms every other bathroom in the city mm. though awful so wow yeah yeah, Any thoughts yeah on this one? uh Kelsey? carrie i literally wrote down um where did it go the how did i phrase it because i want to Oh, the bathrooms. Literally, my number 20 that I wrote down are the bathrooms, which are always a biohazard. That is what I wrote <laughs> down on my on my list. Uh, yeah, it's just it's it's you know, this is where I'd like to blame just like the corporation of AMC because I don't want to come at the workers because you're right. It is an awful job. It's this is like this is from the top, right? Because the like. <laughs> The corporation should probably be paying everyone better so that they, you know, just do their jobs efficiently. And then the manager should be on their employees that it actually gets done. So, mm. you know what? This is, I'm going straight to the top, baby. AMC, I'm talking to you. Your bathrooms are hazardous. <laughs> hazardous, my guy. Yeah. We still come to that place for magic, but with an asterisk. Um <laughs> <laughs> Nina, any thoughts on uh, bathroom cleanliness as Chad plays with the laser pointer? <laughs> I mean, I did have gross bathrooms on my list. I think that it's really not that hard, especially for ladies' rooms, to just take one of those paper liners, put it on the toilet, go to the bathroom, flush that, and wash your hands. Like, the fact that every time I go in a movie theater bathroom, there's hair all over the sink, there's, like, wet paper towel on the yeah. floor you don't and, have to elaborate if you don't want to. <laughs> no i'm kidding you, you say as much as you want <laughs> especially especially um the one downtown the movie theater that bathroom is honest i mean i haven't been there in a while but last time i was there that bathroom is tremendous 
Oh, really? Uh, the downtown Cranford or downtown New Cranford. York? Oh, okay. I was going to say downtown New York. You get to the village. Not the best. Um, but hey, I don't know. Uh, Chad, any any th- added thoughts on, on restrooms, ladies or men's or all gender restrooms or wheelchair handicap restrooms? Any? I mean, uh, they're right. It's not any better in the, in the men's room, just like you said. Uh, you, you know, different theaters are like a l- little bit different, but... Um, you know, the one I, I, I go to, I try to get in, get the hell out because it's. <laughs> <laughs> no, literally. Um, You're going to catch I'm, something if you stay too long. I'm actually just very glad that I don't normally have to go into the stall and I feel I feel bad for everyone who has to. So there you go. All right, Carrie, <laughs> what's going to be your wraparound pick? You know, I'm going to stay on the bathroom theme. There's Ooh. another copy of a vine related okay. to bathrooms. Um, and this is a specific to the theater, Chad and I, you know what, actually, no, yeah, it's pretty specific to a theater, Chad and I don't really go to anymore, and we only used to go to occasionally, but I have seen it in other movie theaters, too, where the the bathrooms are located outside of where you, like, oh. stick it in. Yeah. Do you have to go outside of the area where you scanned your ticket to get in, go to the bathroom? And then I get so much anxiety, like, are they going to have to rescan my ticket? And they're yeah, not going to believe, like, you know, like I'm a grown woman sneaking into a movie theater. But The AMC and White Marsh is like that yeah. still. Yeah. Because they have the specific hallways to the theaters. That's where they scan your ticket, not just access to the theater in general. Yeah. So and it's... Wow. It's annoying because I, I just get so much anxiety about it. And it's also like it turns it into like a pretty long walk to yeah. get right. You're already like missing part of the movie. You're trying to rush when you go to yeah. the back in the middle. Yeah. 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 That's a very specific, but like I think it's relatable. At least I, I've, I've been to theaters like that. Not necessarily where it's outside the ticket area, but like we have a uh, Nina and Kelsey and I have a theater back home in Jersey where it's like there's like two big hallways basically and if you're mm. in like theater one which is all the way down this one hallway the bathroom is like all the way at the start of the other one and it's like it's, it's like a five minute trip um so yeah ba- so is the specific pet peeve the distance of bathrooms or the re-entry with the ticket no, it's definitely the specific is the re having yeah, the re-entry. Re-entry. so bathrooms located outside ticket scan re-entry anxiety yeah that's I, <laughs> that's what, I mean these peppies are gonna be fun to write down on the graphic because they're very specific but you know they're specific for a reason there's 25 of them and they're all great uh any other thoughts on that that's interesting because you wouldn't find that in new york because if anybody if any joe schmo off the street had access to the bathrooms at an amc theater in new york city the <laughs> bathrooms would be a hundred times worse than they already right. are like right. you have to have a ticket if you want to use the bathroom so actually, I was in Boston last in, in July, two months ago now, and I had to pee so bad. And thank God for A-List because I just bought a ticket to Barbie just so I could run in and Wait. use the bathroom. I'm so not the reason that made a billion dollars. So yeah, I was gonna say the reason it's grossing so much money is <laughs> it's because tickets to throw away. I had to use the bathroom. But you know, in on A-list, it's like, oh, this ticket was zero dollars. I mean, I, I right. understand I pay the fee every month, but like I just had no, to be so bad that I was like, I'm gonna just get this ticket and just like I literally ran in, I used the bathroom, I came and out. they scanned the ticket. And they scan the ticket. So so it did get their money. Because because you don't get the grosses unless the ticket's scanned. So like, no, the, the scan, signs on the goes. door. If I could have just walked in and used the bathroom, I would have done that. But this, there were signs on the door that said bathrooms are for ticket holders only. So I was like, all right, then a ticket holder, uh, I will become. the system. That's, that's good. Yeah. Um, so if you ever need on? to use the bathroom, life hack. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things. I've had the same exact experience as Carrie before. Luckily, it's not like the one we normally go to. But sometimes... Yeah. Depending on show times, we'll we will make the trip to the other one that that is like that. And I, after I scan my ticket, like I almost like I've asked them before, like if I have to come back out here, do I have to say anything? Um, but then, like normally, I'll try to just in my head put it as like, no, I'm entitled to just go walk right past right. them because I've already scanned. But mm-hmm. in the back of my head, in the back of my head, I'm also like the same as Carrie. Like I'm like. 
oh, but please don't stop me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then, and then I feel like it's weird if you also like tell them like, hey, I'm going to the bathroom. I'll be right back. Yeah. Right. Like, right. Yeah. Weird. They're just like, like I don't they care. Gonna, <laughs> right. They're gonna be like, okay, and then it's like, all right, well, you better let me back in though. Like that's why I'm giving you this heads up. I'm not just telling you. <laughs> like, yeah, that's that's tough. Um. All right. So Kelsey, we're gonna go on to you. Pick two right. of the third round. Uh, you have leaving um, garbage behind the buttery hands. What else? <laughs> Pets, your okay. Um, you had alluded to this kind of earlier, Dill, when you were talking about the person that sits right next to you, right? So, okay. and I talked about, um, I had mentioned my little uh, cute little anxiety quirk that I have going on. And I think my biggest problem with the movie theaters as of late is that I just feel like we're in a place in society. It's 2023, damn it. Mm -hmm. Every single chair should have its two individual armrests. None of this Ooh. sharing the armrest bullshit oh. anymore, okay? I'm oh, sick of this. Of because it it riddles me with so much anxiety because most of the time like I go to the movies with like a bunch of friends or at least like one friend right and then like you know sharing it with a friend is like fine because you can both like take your turn with like sharing the armrest but then I'm like oh am I hogging the armrest like I'll shuffle over a little bit so then they get the good spot for a while but if I have to share the armrest with a stranger I don't even look at it the armrest doesn't exist because I'm like I'm not gonna inconvenience you and your movie theater experience like you please have the armrest Rest. And so now I'm uncomfortable the whole time and I just get panicky and I'm in my head about it. Yeah. And then I can't even watch the movie because I'm thinking about the damn armrest. So I think at this point, every pair should just get its own two armrests. What are we? What are we barbarians? We're out here still staring <laughs> armrests. I'm over this. Do you um, not have the uh, like the recliner chairs um, in any of the theaters? Because those normally are just like one chair. Yeah, some. some right. Do. So I used to before, so sorry, AMC, but before I became an AMC A-lister, mm, I used to go Cinemark. to Cinemark. Mm. And I love Cinemark because Cinemark had the best chairs and they had heat seaters. So in the winter, your tush could be nice and warm. And everyone had their own little seat and their own little armrest. But I found that the recliner chairs are not as common as I thought they were going to be. Mm. Huh. And so I I'm think, I'm I'm in regular seats yeah. more often than not. I'm only in the recliners if I'm going to see the Dolby. Yeah, I was and say, that Dolby costs an arm them. and a leg. Dolby has them. Some recliners do, but some don't. I know, like the red recliners with like the just regular two buttons. I think right. they're shared, but I can't remember. Maybe not. Chad, our the theater, the AMC Dolby Theater has a shared. It's like a. I thought that big. like well the okay. So there's like individual, like like not individual. The uh, each recliner is kind of like a two seater. Yeah, mm. and so then there's mm. a shared armrest in between. But generally, right. generally, if it's you're going with down. someone else, you will pick those two seats. Right. To share with whoever you're with. Like if I'm with Carrie, I'm not gonna like you know if I hog it or she hogs it. It's it's we're it's fine because we know each other. But right. like. But student. if you have my pet peeve guy who sits next to me and is like, oh, sure, <laughs> you know, like I don't know. But I think like Kelsey's was mostly like kind of like like a like a stranger because like if it's mm -hmm. if it's someone you know, you could just kind of like go up against them a little bit, or unless that's that's weird, I don't know. But like you know what I mean, like yeah. Even then though, like sometimes it's like, uh, dude, like give me my space. It's almost more because it's your friend. You got to be like buddy like give me my space but i get right. it, i get it if it's a romantic bond i think it's not a problem i don't want like, tensions yeah. to okay. run high between or dill and i when we're at the movies yeah it's you like, know what i mean how do you guys deal with that generally do you <sighs> i think I, I, I don't know. <laughs> well i i personally suffer in silence no, uh, I, I, I like um, I, I think one thing is like if i don't have someone on this side but i have someone on this side i'll hold the popcorn with this hand and then i'll sit back so like the popcorn this other yeah, hand yeah. not on the armrest and yeah, have, dude, you're a big you're a big popcorn it. holder See, that's I, where, I always hold the popcorn. That's where we don't, I we will don't run never, into the issue a lot. This may be a pet peeve later, so I'm not going to say it now, but like, okay. yeah, I hold the popcorn. Um. Yeah, you hold <laughs> You're in charge of the popcorn. popcorn. <laughs> I'm the um, captain now. Yeah. Uh, uh. Dina, do you have a problem with shared armrests? Um, well, I have something similar on my, not on my top okay. five, but in my list to kind of this, but 
I'm not going to say, but yeah, I could, I've never really had to deal with that because it's mostly been like whatever theater I go to, there's always like those brown recliner chairs and they have like one on each side. Yeah. Mm. I think I've... Must be nice. The Dolby's. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's a good point. Some yeah, theaters have... do have recliners and like regular, like we have another one yes. that doesn't have Dolby or IMAX. But all the like regular digital theaters yeah. have recliners. It's really nice. I will say, Kip's Bay, the same one with the great bathrooms, have recliners in all the in all the auditoriums. So there you go. Oh, but I think they yeah. have shared armrests. I'm not sure though. Um, and then AMC 34 by Penn Station Kels has the tray tables that come out of the seats too to be like. Hey, I have know, gone to a theater with a tray table. Yeah. And that has the bar. Because yeah, I they have the MacGuffins. Yeah. If you have the bar and like the food service, a, a lot of the those have a uh, tray. They don't. I don't think they have the food service, but they have a bar in the lobby, so like they have like the extra tray. I'm like oh, so extra. But anyway, <laughs> Nina, what's gonna be your third pick? Hmm, I'm between two, but I'm really I'm gonna go with this one. Yeah. I don't think anyone... still, the other one still might get around to you. So all right, strategic. I'm gonna go with this one. I can't think of what movie this happened to me too i might have been at cranford but i don't know or i think so um but i remember during the movie i was on like an aisle seat and i was right next to the the pathway um yeah. right there the carpet pathway and the, aisle. the lights were on bright the entire movie no. and i had to literally it just distracted me the entire movie. I really forget what movie it was, but it's when the pathway lights being too bright during the movie. Basically. Yeah, the aisle, yeah, the aisle lights. Yeah, because they have the little, they're like the little strips. They're, they're they on, the like side, on the floor. Yeah, yeah, and they're lined. And yeah, yeah. they were just like, they were a warm light, but like an orange tone, but it was just right. so bright that yeah, no. it was all <clears throat> Like they left them on. I don't know. Because yeah. but... you need them because if someone knows, does go to the bathroom or something, you need to like legally have them exactly. so they find their like... way. But I think other theaters have been doing a good job adjusting. Like the Dolby has these like softer blue lights that aren't too distracting. But that is a good point, especially if you're on the aisle, like and especially if you're just seated in a way, like sometimes the glare of the light can get to you. Like I, I definitely have felt that. Um yeah, wow, that's a good one. Yeah, aisle lights too bright uh, any any other thoughts about that kelsey it sounds like you i'm s i'm sorry that happened to you nina that sucks that I would i would honest to god i think i'd have to get out and like tell a worker and be like i can't i down. can't watch this movie yeah. please turn these lights down mm. yeah any other thoughts chad have you experienced this um yeah i mean it's i like yeah it, it's like um it's not just those strips but i feel like if it's any lights like the strips on the side or if it's even like the the ceiling lights sometimes they they might either uh, i feel like they normally will catch themselves and do it into the a little bit into the movie but i've i've never i do, i don't remember if i've ever had it where it's the whole movie and i could yeah. totally see that being crazy distracting cuz it's just like you need the the darkness for because the screen's supposed to be the the big focal point. Mm -hmm. so if you're right. gonna see that light somewhere else. Especially if it's like a dark movie too, like a talk to me. Like you don't want any light. Oh, yeah. Like if it's like a, a right. MCU movie, there's probably gonna be a lot of color. But Kelsey and I, when we would see Ant Man Quantumania, I don't know if you remember this, Kels. Our AMC that yeah. we go to, the IMAX at Lincoln Center, it's the biggest uh, screen in the country. Not oh, I, I saw Wakanda there. Yes. So there's these like big like projected things on the on the walls that said IMAX and it's you know when the lights yeah, are on, yep, yep, on. Yep. and then they dim the lights when Nicole does her thing and they dim the lights but then those IMAX things stayed on I went it feels a little bright and, and Kelsey and Landon were both like I, I don't know if it's I, I think it's right like I'm like it's not because I'm also noticing the projection I'm like there's some color fading that's off like yeah. it's not the color yeah. grading which is already an issue in the MCU but it's like even worse it's like almost like someone's shining a bulb behind it i was like there's something right. off and then like 10 to 15 minutes in those shut off and i was like ah there's the hd quality yes. crisp laser vision like there we go um because it yeah one light that's too bright can change the whole color of the screen yeah um so yeah that's that's a, a good point you know i didn't think about that like just surrounding. yeah i remember that 
I remember that happened to us still, but I didn't so remember pissed. what movie it was, and I didn't remember if it was you who was with me. So thank yeah. you for reminding me. Well, because me. you and Landon were like, that's eh, no big deal. And I was like, I'm fuming. Uh, no, I yell. know. I remember. I remember. I was so mad. I was like, and oh. I, I guess, I guess, like it's kind of like a the projectionist job to do all that. I mean, because they don't. I'm not saying they don't. They definitely have a hard job, but like it's not as like hard as when it was like film. So yeah, it's like right. just. Need I to do all my little like digital projection. I almost feel like it's on a timer schedule. Like I don't even think they do it right. Like I think they probably just press because the trailers run right into the movie. I wonder if it's timed out to where the lights dim at a certain point. I don't know. I've actually never known if that's what I happens. Really no guesses to how. Um, maybe maybe that's what happens. Is that if there's a faulty thing with the dimmer, someone has to go up there and, and fix it. Yeah. When they yeah, actually figure, figure that out. Yeah. And then that's why it takes a little bit longer because they got to get up to that room to fix it. That's a good point. Um, all right. Uh, okay, mo moving on to pick four. Oh, shoot, it's me. All right, so this is tough. Sure is. I'm going to go for one that's like so specific. Y'all are going to get annoyed at me, but it's a bathroom thing. Um, okay. And it's a I go to the movies by myself thing. When I go to the movies by myself, and let's say I want to double feature it. It's the urinal. Someone goes to the urinal right next to you. No, I don't mind that. I, I, I'm up for a good. <laughs> I, I'm, no, I'm for... Dylan's like I actually welcome that behavior. I, I, I like I, to feel less alone. Talk. I, I like a little tickle talk now and then. That's fine. Oh my God. Um, so as long as they don't cross streams, I no. So the the thing that I don't like that that it's not even a pet peeve. It's just more like an unfortunate circumstance that I'll never ever be able to fix. Maybe. Um, it's when you're like, let's say you're doing a double feature, right? You got a popcorn and a soda. Movie one finishes. You're about okay. to go into movie two, oh. and you have to use the bathroom. Yeah. But you didn't go with anyone. So it's like, oh, I need to use the bathroom. Who's going to so hold great. my popcorn you got to bring it into the bathroom. Oh. And it is the grossest thing. Damn. I'm like, I'm going to bring this open popcorn bin into the – and what if it's a number two? I've got to sit there with my popcorn bin in my hands like this. And then mm. what, happens? What, happens? what happens? There is no armrest. What happens when I have to do the wipe? Do I have to hold the popcorn bin like this? Like, how do I do it? Which Please tell complete... me you've never done that. I haven't because I can't. <laughs> 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 the thing is, there needs to be a designated locker or cubby to put your popcorn and drink in when you go to the bathroom alone at a theater. That's yeah. hilarious. I, what, I, what I could do is go into the next auditorium, leave the popcorn and drink, go to the bathroom and come back. But in that two minutes I was gone, how do I know someone didn't come over with some arsenic and poison my drink? You know what I mean? Right. So like, I, yeah, I, it's right. a common common thing that yeah. happens to of people. Course. Yeah, yeah, or, or puts like razor blades in my popcorn. But the thing is like, yeah, or you can eat candy on Halloween. Yeah, exactly. Like you don't want to sleep hands, popcorn you know. unattended. Now, when you're with someone else, it's easy because it could be like, "Hey, Carrie, I'm going to the bathroom. Hold my popcorn and drink. I'm gonna go in, come out, and then Carrie goes in while you hold hers." But if you're alone, how do you overcome that? I don't know. I don't know the answer. What I have done once, and it was because it was like oh, not God. very busy. I went up to the guy behind the stand. I said, "Hey, can you hold this? I need to go to the bathroom. I'll be right out. I just don't want to leave it anywhere." He goes, "Sure." And I come back out, and he oh, gives it to me. That's nice. Also, if it's that's busy nice. though. And they're running around, get the nachos, get the hot dogs. And I'm like, hey, can you hold this while I shit? Like, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. Like, it's really one of the most, like, unfortunate circumstances because I really don't know a solution. Does anyone have an idea of how to solve it? Like, I, I don't know. You just have one. I right, would say. Busy, I, don't, I don't know. No, you like cupboards, like a locker. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. Puppy. yeah. I would I say if puppy. you're alone, if you have, like, a sweatshirt or a jacket, put that on your seat and put the popcorn, like, on your sweatshirt, so it and put like a napkin over it so no one eats it. Like I guess so. Yeah, but, it, I mean, you know, but what if there's like 20 minutes between movies though, and you can't get into the next one? Then it's like I gotta mm. wait 20 minutes you to can get bring my it to the concession stand and say like, "Hey, I'll be back in a minute." Yeah, that's what I did once. But again, if it's too busy, I don't. I, and it's also uncomfortable. It's kind of like the thing with like Carrie and Chad with the whole like leaving to your ticket and re-entry. It's like you don't want to tell people you you don't want to announce you're going to the bathroom. It's because it's specifically to like a. Well, I guess it's if it's if you just got your your stuff well before the like you're that early, or it's specifically like if you're doing like a double or triple feature or something like that. One one time, I literally went to a double feature. It was Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny and Joyride, and I went to Indiana Jones and I literally said, "I'm not gonna get popcorn because I know afterwards it's a long movie. I'm gonna have to use the bathroom." So I didn't get anything. And then for Joyride, I got my snacks. But it's also like, so now just this whole, mm. especially with A-List, I can get two popcorns for the price of one. So it's like, 
it is two and a half hours I could be munching that I'd, you know, rather, you know, that I sacrificed because I knew I would have to go to the bathroom. At. It's just, you know, it's, it's a problem. And then it's a very specific pet peeve, but it, it is a pet peeve nonetheless. So, yeah, I've, I've had, uh, frequent uh, issues um and i guess it's it is mostly if i go by myself but even even still sometimes it's like carrie and i will have we'll just go to the bathroom at the same time it's not like we mm -hmm. wait for each other we're trying to like get out of there or we're rushing to get to the next movie or something like that we're, so we're late <laughs> we're trying to get or we're, we're late yeah so sometimes <laughs> i'll go into the bathroom i'll have my drink and i'll like put it on top of the urinal and I've mm. had, I think I've had to do popcorn as well, oh. but it feels like if you take your popcorn into the bathroom, it feels like you've just converted your popcorn to being trash at that point. Right. Yeah. And it, and and I get like you could empty the the bucket and then get it refilled, like it's fine, but it's still the bucket's still in there, you know, like yeah. it's you know even if the popcorn's not because you could easily spill it out and then refill it easy for a list, but it's just tough. I just don't know the solution. So it's a very yeah. specific that is point, tough deal. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. Chad, take it away. What's what's the fifth pick in the draft uh, round three going to be? Yeah, um, this one, um, this one is specifically, I think, an MCU like Marvel problem. But I feel like it Love also it. happens at other movies as well. Um, and it's not the movie itself, but right. it's the people that go to watch it. Um, and I'm not, mm. you know. I'm a Marvel fan, so I, I go right. to all these movies. The people who only see Marvel movies is your not necessarily. I don't know. Like I'm not even trying to put p people who only see Marvel movies in a box. Like I don't know if the people that do this like are, are that type of person either. Um, okay. But it's specifically, and I only bring up MCU because it was it's been like the last like big you know, franchise that, you know, has basically dominated the theater going mm -hmm. experience for over a decade. Um, yeah. So it's like, uh, specifically, I've noticed that it happens when I go to those, like, you know, specifically, or me, I remember like, you know, going to see No Way Home. And it's like, I know that like, especially, you know, I guess after like Taika, got in there or like the guardians got in there and they just started to try to make these movies like really, really funny. Mm -hmm. um, so it feels like audiences in those movies in particular, but I think others as well have been kind of trained to think that you need to laugh like every few minutes, even if the movie's not being funny. Mm -hmm. And I'm so laughing at non funny things is the thing. I have that on laughing, my list. I just, it's, it's just like, inappropriate <laughs> laughter or laughing too much um and mm. i i think those kind of combine into like one thing um because if you're laughing like at everything you know and it's just like one of those things where it's like i don't i don't know if maybe they were drunk like specifically mm. but it happens so much that i'm like you know is everyone getting drunk and going yeah. to see mcu movies or maybe it's just uh, that funny chad i'm kidding <laughs> maybe it is that funny but like tell it's, you it's not <laughs> I, I will tell you it's one of those things to where spider-man no way home specifically is a different movie if you go to watch it at the theater or if you watch it at home because if you watch it at the theater depending on the audience if they're laughing at the whole movie like every few minutes you're going to think it's like one of the biggest comedies of all time. And then you go home and you're like, no, there's some, there's a lot of funny parts, but it's nowhere near as funny as they were making it seem. Mm -hmm. So they're in a way just making the experience so different that you almost, I could see someone actually judging the movie on people laughing during the movie because like you're, you're then I guess getting like a, like a laughter, in your head and then you're just like you know maybe judging filtering the movie through that lens yeah it makes you think the movie is supposed to be funnier than it actually is and like yeah, you think and you're then, wrong for it yeah and then you go home and then you're like <laughs> no that's actually a really good movie or not and then you're just like you know but it's nowhere near as funny and i can actually laugh i don't know every 10 minutes when when you're supposed to or or something mm -hmm. like that i don't know if other people have Notice the only this. time I could think of in recent memory is when someone laughed at the poor animals with the things on their like the mechanical parts on them in Guardians 3. I don't know if you remember oh. that when like when like the little bunny yeah. wheeled out and someone went, <laughs> I was like, no. I looked around, I was like, that's, no, that's 
not a part of my pet peeve. That's actually oh. just someone who's evil. Um, right. Okay. So evil evil people. Right. Yeah. Or, <laughs> or actually it happened to Wakanda forever too. The same people, Kelsey, when they were like doing the African chants, they were like, what is, or like when the girl, I think it was like Okoye was like, like messy crying, you know, it's not yeah. her nose crying. And she yeah. was just like, Rrr! and everyone's like, Rrr! that's, you know, like, the, kind of that's like that. the Spencer people. It's yeah. the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, yeah. it's similar. Yeah. But, yeah, and, and Nina, you said you almost had this on. You had this on your list. I had this on. It wasn't my top five, but I had people laughing at stuff that isn't funny. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. 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 Uh, Carrie, I mean, any the... thoughts? Do you agree? Oh, sorry, Kelsey. You could go no, ahead. no worries. I was just gonna say it's tough. Yeah, when when things are just like not as funny and don't warrant warrant like a a super big reaction, like that's annoying. But it's like tough with movies because with live theater, like you always get told like as an actor, like hold for laughs because you don't want the audience to miss anything. So when something really big happens, like you hold for the laughter, you wait for the curve to die and then you continue on with the scene. Like movies don't do that because like, yeah. obviously there are movies and it's funny that you bring up no way home, Chad, because Dylan and I saw that movie opening night and I swear to God, I missed half of that movie because yeah. of the audience's reactions to yep. it. Like we missed all the dialogue between the MJ and a Andrew Garfield scene. Like I didn't mm -hmm. hear a single piece of dialogue. Yeah. In and that those scene. scenes literally have time to pause breaks too. And yeah. they still talk through it all. Yeah. Right. Wow. And so it's it, like, I didn't hear what they actually said until that movie came out on streaming and I was able to watch it at home. I was like, Oh great. So this was the dialogue. Didn't know. Didn't yeah. even know they were talking. We're going to retitle it. Spider-Man watch at home instead of no way home. Um, <laughs> bad, bad joke. Bad joke. Um, Carrie, you go to the movies with chat a lot. Do you experience this as well? Um, mostly from the point of view that Chad, I think, gets a lot more annoyed by it than I do. Like, we'll come out of, like, MCU movies in particular. He'd be like, I don't know why those people were laughing the whole time. <laughs> yeah. but I'll say it, do it does annoy me when people laugh at something that's clearly not funny. Or, like, it's not even, like, there's no way you can really interpret, interpret it as being yeah. funny. Yeah. No, that's a good yeah. point. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um... Chad, you got the next pick. You got the first pick in the fourth round. So what are you going to go with as your wraparound pick? Um, Yeah, I'll go with, I don't know. I mean, I guess one that, like, I don't understand how no one has actually picked this yet, unless I'm for forgetting. Yeah. People are just pick. being so specific. It's like there's still some generals that are out there that are just very, you know, no-brainers. You know? And it, I guess it's a little bit related to uh, one of Nina's picks, but it's um, just phones. Phone, yeah, like using I, have that on, I have that on my list okay mm. yeah um it's i mean it's a very common problem and unless someone has a very specific issue i guess i'll just say phones in general uh just because you have people talking on them and then you have like the bright lights of the screens and it's kind of like because sometimes when they answer the phones you'll see the bright lights anyways but they also use like phone lights to uh find their seat sometimes and it's like it's i guess this also uh goes into the being late thing either you're using the phone now to find your seat and it's like bro are you mm. scared like i yeah. the shield my eyes because it's a very dark in here um and uh but yeah i mean it's also like i guess like people literally just like having the gall to actually pick pick up their phone and start talking i think has only maybe happened once to me in like my lifetime that I can actually remember. Um, so that's not really that common of a problem, but if that happens, obviously that would be terrible. Um, but yeah, I mean, I guess it's just in general people, you know, opening the phone and it's just very bright. And I mean, I've been guilty of it before, but like generally what I'll try to do if I have to, I mean, generally I, I sit in the very back anyways, right. because if someone's behind me making like crunching on their popcorn or something like that, it's worse than if they're in front of me for some reason. So I, I generally will sit in the back, but, um, well, so I guess that's more of a problem because I can see more of everyone doing that, their phone stuff. Um, but, uh, I don't know where I was going with that. Sit in the back actually. No, I lost. Yeah, you, you, you try to be discreet well, about it is where you were going. Oh yeah. Like, so, you have to do it. So generally yeah. I'll sit in the back. And so I know nowadays, because now we have to do the whole thing where we get a babysitter 
we come and then I know Carrie's going to always be checking our phone just to make sure yeah. there's no like emergency, you know, kind of a deal. And um, I'm kind of the same way. Like if both of our phones light up, we're like, Oh yeah. Uh, you know, I have to check, but I know it's going to be very bright. I didn't, I didn't shade down the brightness on the screen. I think if you're at least trying to make an attempt to do it and you're just being very discreet and you're trying to like, you know, hide it a little bit. So you're not just being, you know, blatantly just like scrolling on your phone or something. Yeah. It's not that frequent of an issue, but when it does happen, it, it's, it's annoying. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it's not just the act of it. It's the brightness that comes with it. You know, if, if phones didn't make a brightness, like, It'll kind of be whatever. I will say, yeah, um, for, I think for most of these, the reason, like the act itself is annoying, but I think just like the the gall that people have, like the not even, no concern for other people. It's kind of like Kelsey's in the very beginning, like, you know, not picking up after your set, just the gall that people have to just not have respect for others around them. And yeah, yeah I can't yeah. do that as my pet peeve, just yeah. a wide... <laughs> <laughs> no respect for people yeah, and, and right. respect for the filmmakers themselves too because it's yeah. like you're literally paying to see i guess amc a list is a little different now but it's like you're paying money to see this like watch it like get your money's worth don't yeah. spend the whole time checking your phone i get it if it's like the babysitter we want to check in every now and then or like you know with nina and i with the dogs you know making sure the dogs are okay with whoever is at home with them um usually it is nina um <laughs> we'll text hey nina the dog's okay um but yeah it's like that's that's the thing like you have to check in on your life but it also it's like if you're just doing it to do it like i've seen people on their instagrams and i'm like this is not necessary i was like you yeah. don't need to be on instagram now it's like it's watch the movie if you don't like the movie you can leave i've seen so many people on snapchat and then you just see like the flash of the selfie well, they take well that's oh, another sure. issue too yeah that's because then it also Annoying. becomes illegal because if it's like you're filming the movie like, you're you're in trouble and i see so many tiktoks of just like screen recording of oh lord in the theaters yeah so um no it's a big thing just using your phone in general uh anyone else have any thoughts on, on that kelsey i mean we were t what were you we talking about oh talk when talking came up like it's it this i thought the same thing like you're talking through this movie or you're like using your phone through the movie i'm like you paid to see this movie like movies aren't cheap they're not like 12 bucks anymore like they used oh, to like you see a movie in new york city bad. like it's it's 20 dollars, like easy and then on top of that like snacks and everything i'm like this this was an investment i was now. gonna say don't take pics because <laughs> that could be but, a pep even in of itself it could yeah. be, yeah. oh well like, sorry but no, okay. but i'm it's just a, saying like it's important for the conversation i'm not, I'm not talking about like the prices like that's not the point of this but the point is that you did pay to see this and now you're like not even gonna pay attention to it at all it's just like it's just weird i'm like what, what are you doing this for yeah yeah carrie any thoughts on uh texting or calling or being on your phone during a movie yeah um you know and like chad mentioned i have gotten kind of just like I'll kind of keep my phone like face up now. And if it lights up, I'll like, you know, take a look. And it's almost, I don't think it's ever been something important. And I'll just like, you know, yeah. click to close and be done with it. But um, it, it can be hard to, I, I, I don't it, like people just on Facebook or Instagram or something like something you clearly don't need to be on. You're not checking up on, you know, your kids or your, your animals or anything. Um, mm -hmm. I just don't understand. Yeah. Yeah. It's a problem. Um, Nina, any added thoughts to it? I know you said it was on your list as well. Any, any other thoughts about talking on the phone or texting? Uh, I've never experienced like an actual phone call that someone had during a movie, yeah. but definitely texting and, using apps and social media during the movie it yeah. annoys you because you see the bright lights yeah i mean we all saw the uh the what was it logan paul the tech uh, tweeted during oppenheimer said god this is boring i was like you asshole go <laughs> home like put it away or go home please uh, what a um, jerk yeah it's literally one of my top five least favorite people in the world um all right that might not be true um all right so my top next 20 one for sure oh yeah um so if we had a draft of people we just never want on <laughs> worst this people in the world draft go. hey that's an idea yeah <laughs> just shit on people it's just we can't pick like war or genocide related things it's just like people who annoy us more so than like actual anyway that was a tangent all right so mine has to do with kind of what kelsey's was with buttery hands but it's a totally different butter related thing now mm. kelsey what was the question you asked us all before you prefaced your your pick 
Do you put butter on your popcorn? And who said no? You. you. Yes. I don't think you realized. I said no. And here's the thing. When I'm with oh. you, like, yeah, like, I'll, I'm fine with the butter on the popcorn. It's, it's not like I don't like it. I mean, I don't personally need it. Okay. But my pet peeve is self-serve butter in general. And I know that's going to be, like, that's not going to get me this win in this draft, and that's okay because a lot of people love it. They're like, I can put as much as I want on. This is so cool. But, <laughs> but think about healthy. how disgusting it is that you are going I up. Um, I feel personally no, no, victimized. No, 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 Kelsey, that was not an impression of you. But, like, some people love – like, it's mind-blowing. Good, because it was way off. That's not what no, I no, sound no. like people, at all. I wasn't trying to. But, like, <laughs> it's mind-blowing to some people that they're like, I can serve myself. Butter? it's like when they open up like a starbucks and they're like no you can put the pumps of vanilla in yourself and it's like oh my god what and like starbucks is a little more refined so like but the idea of going up to a pump <laughs> and pumping butter out of a nozzle that is not this cover is... it's just out all day you don't know how long it's been since they replaced the butter inside it that could be like sure. seven year old butter that's just been <laughs> sitting in a vat that you're just squeezing on no your popcorn. it's fresh it's definitely fresh all right but we don't know and who and knows the thing is, Nina. The thing is, you're also you're also I'll ask putting, my friend who works at movie theaters you're also putting your hands on this lever or this button that other people have been touching all day who knows if a baby went up and like started drinking from it like a water fountain Whoa. i've seen that i've been on a sub i've been on a subway when a baby is fully mouth the rail of the subway like that babies baby will put their mouths on any shots and I'm, not saying baby babies. I'm, saying, railings I'm not saying baby babies the... i'm saying like like toddlers who can walk and by their own volition walk up to the butter thing and like put their mouths on things like i don't think chad or higher, gonna lean a... yeah i don't think chad or carrie's gonna lean elliot into the butter thing and say lick it like that's not what i'm talking about <laughs> i'm saying like the kids who are Ew. like oh i want to put butter on my popcorn and they're getting all handsy the thing is post-covid you would think that this is something they'd do away with. And I'm not saying you can't have self, like add butter to your popcorn, but the way, again, I'm going to bring it up, the hometown Cranford, Cranford Theater does it is when you order a popcorn at the can counter, they say, would you like butter? And you say yes. And they say, how much? And they, it's like, tell me when. It's like when you're at an Olive Garden mm. and they start cranking the Parmesan cheese on your plate. Yeah, yeah, Why yeah. Why would you want anyone else touching your Parmesan cheese? I'm going to have the server who washes his hands. Employee must wash hands before returning to work, cranking my cheese. I see that. I that sounded bad. But why can't we just have the people who give us the popcorn give us the butter as well? And then yeah, it's an extra step. It might be more time consuming, but I'd much rather someone who is washing their hands, wearing gloves, putting on the butter on my popcorn. I would get butter if someone else was putting it on, but I'm I don't like the idea of going up to this nozzle that everyone's been touching all day and putting it all over my popcorn. That's just me. And it's my germaphobe side of that. That's just, I don't like that. It's why I would, don't go to salad bars anymore post COVID because I just think there's an ick to that or buffets, you know, but at least buffets, there are people tending it. But I feel like butter is something like if you're going to an 11 o'clock movie, that butter has been in there since 11 AM. I'm sorry. Um, but that is my pet peeve is self-serve butter germs. I feel like when that's they, that. I feel like when they have um, like chains, like AMC and Cinemark and, they're probably more likely to have stations like that so that yeah. like you know it's like you're doing mo part of the work part of the job yeah. um but like if it's like because i used to work at um it was like part of regal but it was like uh, a, a more of a local chain called hoyts um yeah. i used to work there and we would do the butter they wouldn't be able to do it themselves right. and the, the cool thing there too the added benefit is it's before all the popcorns in there, so most right, you can people, add it. Like, most like, people gradually. would be like layer it, and I'd go, all right, yes. mm, oh, that's scoop, awesome. Scoop, it's, butter, scoop, yeah, scoop, it's, butter. It's part of the experience, and I feel like now people have just gotten lazy to where, oh, you can add all the butter you want yourself, but it's like, do I want to be touching this thing that everyone else is? I don't know. That's the the germaphobe thing in me, but it's like all the ketchups are packaged. Like all the salts are in little salt packages. I guess there's sometimes salt shakers out. Sometimes there. there's squirt ketchups that are kind of like See, the same. I don't like that, don't like that yeah. either, though. I mean, but I'm same specific thing. to butter because butter is like what most people use. But like, yeah, yeah. like I don't usually use ketchup because I don't get all the hot dogs and pretzels and all the other things. But yeah, it's just like I don't, I don't like that. I mean, does anyone have like a counter to that? I mean, Kelsey and Nina, I know you guys like your butter on your popcorn. Do you guys like the whole self serve idea or? It's okay to say yes. Well, I don't mind it. Uh, Dill, I, this is not where I thought you were going with, with when Where's, you, you know, brought up the butter and on the popcorn. 
and I, you... I don't want to give away another pet peeve, but like, I feel like, okay, are don't... we all thinking what I'm thinking in this at this do, time? Do that I'm not honorable on my list. Okay, Luke, fine. I don't we'll, think there's we'll, anything we'll, else we'll, wrong with butter. I just think it's not sanitary to all be drinking from the same well. I think we can have our, the attendant butter. It for I'll us. say, like Chad said, layer it, layer it. Well, I'll say, you know, I mean, you you can't really layer it. All you can do is do it on top, shake it up, and then do it again. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm kind of with Kelsey and Nina that it, it's not something that bothers me, but I can see it being like like it's like the pop, some pe eating popcorn thing that bothers me. Mm -hmm. I can see that being a very specific thing that bugs you. And another thing is. It's very rare because of what my last pet peeve was. I can't take the popcorn in the bathroom with me, so I don't have time to wash my hands between t pressing the button and sitting in the theater eating it. You know, if I could go to the bathroom after I did the butter, wash my hands, and then eat it, that'd be different. But I don't always have that luxury. So it's like, if I don't get to wash my hands, then I I can't touch anything. Oh, that's gonna yeah. Be, you know what I mean? You could also take like, a napkin and put it over your thumb and then... Go you know, that's actually train. a very good idea. You know who's not doing that? Anyone else. <laughs> I don't know. That's a good idea for me, though, to get over it. I, I could probably do that. Just, Just put on take, your gloves or a napkin. And... Take Nina I every time understand. you go to the movies, and she'll solve all your problems. Yeah, she'll just butter it <laughs> yeah. I can understand the ick behind it, Dill. I can I can empathize with that. Thank you. Thank do you. I personally no, I, have I don't have it? a problem with no. the butter itself. I, I don't need it is my thing. Like, I don't get it because I don't right. like to self-serve myself. So... Um, I want others to do it for me. Carrie, what's your stance on the butter epidemic? Um, you know, the thing that annoys me most about the self-serve butter is that you, I think you can't layer it. And it bothers me that all the butter, like the top layer of popcorn is super buttery. And then, and then by the bottom, good. you know, there's, there's just nothing there. And it's yeah. kind of gross. And some people have done the hack where you like put the straw on it and then the butter say. goes through the straw, but then it all just goes to the bottom. It doesn't layer. Yeah. It just goes to the bottom. So it's either all on the top or that's, on the bottom. That's way know. too much effort for a public. Yeah, it's <laughs> and it's just soupy. And I don't know. I don't like it. But anyway, Nina, continue along. What is your third? Uh, this is your fourth pick. Sorry. So you get two more. This is going to be your fourth pick. What do you want as your pick? Um, so this recently, not recently, happened to me when I was in the IMAX and I mm -hmm. saw Wakanda Forever with my Amda friends. Um, it was before when we were in the lobby. It's long concession lines. Yeah. Because we mm. we were on time, but also it it being New York, you know, there's a lot of people and it's the IMAX. But the fact that the line was just like wrapped around all of the like barriers they put up to like stand in line mm -hmm. like it was just filled and so yeah. we just got nervous that we would miss the movie we didn't but it's just yeah. long concession lines are annoying yeah. and that's something that like a-list members we have our own line now but it's also like at this point because so many people are a-list now that line starts to get backed up and now it's like is the a-list line even shorter than the regular line at this point like i i totally get that long concession lines regardless of whether you're a member or not can be so annoying because it's like I just want to, you know, I hate waiting online. That's just a thing. Yeah. Any other thoughts on that? Yeah. I mean, it's it's not really like a specific uh, problem necessarily to theaters because it's like, I mean, you go to like an amusement park or right. anywhere else like that, which long lines. But I mean, it is, is also specific to theaters because of concession lines. I'll say that specifically the theater that Carrie and I go to and being A-list we never really have to deal with this. We're mostly wow. just the only people in line. Gotcha. Um, it's more so a pet peeve for me when they take someone else over me because I feel entitled as an A-list member. I'm like, mm. uh, hello, <laughs> right. I'm here yeah. now. Yeah, because it's like the A-list members are getting annoyed. Why aren't we next? But also the regular pedestrians are like, why are they ahead of like, me? But it's, yeah. And, Those and are this the normies, is, you know what I mean? And this has happened. Though, this has happened. They're though, the peasants. The regular, the regular lines, though, sometimes go faster than the A-list lines. At least where I'm, some of the theaters I go to, like Lincoln Square, Kelsey. Those A-list lines take forever, and the regular mm. lines go fast because mm. they have one person designated to A-list. But when you have mm -hmm. one person designated to A-list, and you have five A-list parties, and you have five regular parties, and two people for the regular line, the regular mm -hmm. lines can go faster. So I, I, yeah. I think concession lines in general, there needs to be a something else I, I don't know i mean i I'm, guess they're doing the whole like order your food ahead of time thing for members too but that's just again it's kind of like the butter straw thing it's too much work <laughs> you know and also typically like personally like 
I'm fine with not normally getting concessions. Like there's sometimes Karen, I will, but a lot of the times I'm just like, I, I don't need it. I mean, I'll just go to the theater. So for me, if the line was too long, I would just, I would just go to the movie. But yeah, that's, that's a good point. Kelsey, I can understand what, if you need to have your popcorn, like it's your ritual right. or something. Yeah. Yeah. And for a lot of people that is, it's like, the, yeah. it's just like the experience, especially if, cause like, I know Nina, you don't go to the movies as much as the four of us, but like, when you go to the movies, because you don't go as much, you want that. You want the pop. Exactly. The and yeah. I love the whole experience. Yeah. And your own butter. Um, yeah. Kelsey, what are your thoughts on this? Because I know we've, we're both A-list members who go to New York where the A-list lines are sometimes slower than the regular lines. Well, I'm very new to A-list. So whenever I get to stand in that roped line, it still feels still very new and special. So I'm like, ooh, I get to stand in the shorter line and ooh, maybe they'll take me beforehand. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. So, but I can understand this being annoying, especially when it's like, okay, I got here on time and now I'm missing previews. And now I might, am, I'm like, it. there's potential for me to be missing the beginning of the moving because of this line. That's yeah. annoying, but I want to go back. I want to circle back to what Chad just said, where he doesn't even like get snacks sometimes, which is crazy to me because 50% of the reason why I'm going to the movie is to have movie theater snacks. I'm getting the popcorn. I'm getting my crunch of bunches. I'm getting my root beer. Those are my three things that I get from the <laughs> bunch movie. Bunch of crunch are so good. They are the elite movie theater chocolate, in my opinion. Mm. And so that was just insane to hear. Does the messy chocolate from the Buncher Crunch, though, factor into your pick of buttery hands, or is that a separate issue? I think we're going to get there when we get there, Dylan. Oh, okay. So that's another issue in and of itself. Okay, I got it. I got you. <laughs> I, I'm with Chad, though. Like, I think also, like, if I'm going alone and it's, like, an afternoon and I'm just going to a theater for, like, 90 minutes, I might not get concessions just because it's, like, you know, if I'm going to a movie that's three hours long, it's like, yeah, I'll get concessions just because I want something to munch on. Or, or if a movie starts boring me, I'll go out and get concessions just to keep myself entertained. But yeah. Chad, everything okay? You look scared. Um, Well, I was just thinking like now there's like a, a hear a baby crying. So oh. that, that's got to be taken care of at some point. And then also gotcha. there might be a cat fight here in a second. So that's gotcha. that. Okay. that explains well, do what you need to do. Also, um, also, um, pick, but yeah. also I thought maybe uh, Kelsey's ne next pet, pet peeve was going to be non-concessions people. So <laughs> <laughs> no. Spoiler alert. <laughs> well, it's good to know, though, if, if Chad and Kelsey ever go to the movies, um, then Chad can tell Kelsey what uh, she missed because he'll already be in the movie. doesn't need the concessions. And then and I can hold her hold her popcorn if she's going to the bathroom. There you go. <laughs> Problem <laughs> solved. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Carrie, what, what's your stance on concession lines in, in general and concessions, I guess, because now that's become a bigger issue. Yeah, I'm definitely like more than Chad, the one who's like, oh, let's get some candy. Let's get Pretzel some bites. Pretzel bites. Okay, but I have to see for a certain period, AMC changed. And I think they changed the, cheese, the right? The cheese yeah. for the pretzel mm. bite into some kind of disgusting, oh. I don't know, but wasn't my brightly flavored nacho cheese that I wanted. <laughs> Yeah, that was not so too cheesy. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I, I get that because I feel like they changed the popcorn recipe at some point, but I, I still like the popcorn there. But it's very interesting. I think we're all AMC people too, which is interesting because we can't even compare like, oh, what is Regal popcorn like, or what are Regal lines like? Because we're all just kind of AMC minded. And then like Nina and I have like that small indie theater at home, Kelsey as well. Um, all right, Kelsey, what is going to be your your fourth pick? Is it okay. going to be the one I just tipped? Sorry. Uh, speaking of bunch of crunch, it's not exactly okay. what you said, Dill, but it's it's on track. So as we've, have, I guess I found out about myself during this draft day is that I'm not the um, neatest eater at the movie theater. Who said that? And, <laughs> oh, I don't know, Dill. Who said that? <laughs> and so I didn't, I'm I didn't say okay, it was a messy because, thing. I just guys, said, you know. I need to be real about something. There is nothing, I don't think, on this earth. Maybe Taylor Swift. But there's nothing else besides her that floods my brain faster with dopamine than when I eat something salty and then I eat something sweet. <laughs> oh, my God. The combination <laughs> makes me so giddy and so full of joy. It's 
crazy. So that's why I love movie theater snacks is because so you what's have your the pet peeve though? That's a good thing. Dill, I'm good in there. Oh, okay. Would you hold That's your horses? Okay. okay. I was so just confused because I was like, "That's so great." What do you mean? I'm eating <laughs> my favorite salty snack, which is popcorn, and I'm eating my crunch of bunches. And obviously, I'm shoveling both as quickly into like there's no in between time because I need the salt and the sweet as quick in the mouth as possible. And so when I have when I have a lot of crunch of bunches, not all of them make it into my <laughs> gullet. <laughs> and so one will escape. And now I'm stressed out because one of the crunch a bunches and it's chocolate <laughs> is either A, in between me and the seat and is now melting in between my thighs and the seat. Or it's somewhere on my person melting in between one of my crevices. And now I'm, I'm like, I'm stressed out because I'm trying to pay attention to the movie. But I'm also like, oh, I don't want melted chocolate on me. I got to find this rogue crunch a bunch of. So I rogue gotta crunch, find... crunch a bunches is this specific pet peeve? Crunch a crunch. Yes. When, but, but I'm like, what am I saying? Crunch a bunch of. This... That's what I call. <laughs> but here, let me finish. I I'm okay. almost done. And okay. and so now it's yes, it's when the the chocolate misses my mouth and now it's melting somewhere. And I'm like, this is going to be an issue later, but I can't I can't search for it because then that goes back to the phone thing. What am I going to do? Turn on my flashlight and start looking for it. Can't do that in the movie theater. And also, I don't want to miss the movie I paid for. Mm. So I'm just having some snack That's dilemmas. A good point. That's a good point. I guess this whole episode is kind of like this, but that her pitch there specifically just <laughs> made me think of Kelsey as George Costanza in a Seinfeld episode. <laughs> just yeah. a bunch of crunches and just like explaining the whole thing and yeah. like no, it's it's very passionate. I mean, it's kind of how I was about the bathrooms. Like it's just there's some things that it's just like very specific, but it's like, how do you fix it? And there really is no right. answer, especially if you like that salty sweet combo. And I'll tell you, I, I did get hooked on bunch of crunches because of you, Kelsey. So I, I do like You're them. And, I, I, and if I need to overindulge in a few more cows, I will add them to my bucket. But what I like to do is I always like to pour the candy in the bucket. So I just have the handfuls That's and I do that because sure. Skittles, Skittles used to be my go-to. So like I'd put the Skittles in the popcorn. That's and no insane. Problem. But, but with the chocolate ones, I find, the chocolate melts in the popcorn and then you're picking up popcorn and it's just melty butter and chocolate. Oh, so it's like, that like sounds that, like my but dream, it's, but it's messy. It's it, but it's a thing where it's like, I don't want the bunch of crunches to melt right away, but if I put sure. them on the popcorn, they're going to. So it's like, do I need to get cold popcorn? But then it's stale. It's like a big revolving door. Cold um, yeah. Cold popcorn is not good. <laughs> I know. I just broke Nina's mind. Um, Nina, do you Nina have a problem with melting popcorn? There's you, such you a like thing. Crunch a, you like crunch a bunches. Oh, not cold, but room temp. Um, Nina, you like crunch, crunch a bunches. Crunch. Or crunch a bunches. What are they called? Bunch, crunch bunch a bunch. crunch. But I like to say crunch a bunches because it's more saying? fun. What am I saying? Crunch a bunches. It's okay. okay. So bunches of crunches. Um, yeah, my what, my best friend got me into them. Okay, so all right, well, so I, it's the, the the big drug going around. Got it. Um, Nina, I, so what is, <laughs> we're all hooked. I, well, I used to get sweet tart ropes every time, but mm -hmm. now a bunch of crunches are my new must have. Um, I I do a bunch of crunches every movie now, and does it get having, all over? It doesn't get all over because I I tend to eat from the box and I have my popcorn separate. But there's been a few times when it's fallen in between the seats, but I haven't really thought actually that it could be mm -hmm. on me. I would so love to. I would love to take like a human. Can't say the like, same, Nina. Can't I would like to same. make a human, like a human art piece, kind of like a, a Warhol or a Pollock, where like you have someone go into the movie theater with all white clothing and give them like three boxes of bunch of crunches and a big old box of popcorn or whatever it's called tub. I think, and then and see how how much it gets, and then like frame it. I think they just look like vomit, <laughs> but <laughs> well, it's I brown, like this so experimental like... art piece too. Yeah. Yeah, I like that though. Um, Carrie, Chad, can you relate any melting chocolate stories? I mean, it's just like one of those things to where, like, yeah, sometimes when you're eating snacks, they will like fall away or under the seat or uh, on the floor. I, I just that's not something that normally will distract me. I'll just kind of go like, oh shit, something fell, and then I'll just shrug. 
Yeah. But if you're not that type of person, then yeah, I could see that being very. That's why you get. That's why you get apple slices. They're not messy. You know what I mean? And it's healthy. That's actually uh, same annoying as popcorn, and um, no, I'm not kidding. No. apple. Yeah, apple. No, and I would never be seen in a movie theater with apple slices. But if you do have apple slices in a movie theater, no judgment. Um, Carrie, any other thoughts on chocolate? And if not, we can transfer into your next pick. Um, I suggest, and this is not for everyone, but what Chad and I do is we get M and M's and we pour them in the popcorn bucket, and yep. then the M and I don't know if, if I don't know if Crunch a bunches do the same thing, but with M and M's, you know, the outside stays is the candy. Solid. Oh, it doesn't melt because the chocolate's and in the melts oh. on the sugar. Yeah. Mm. yeah. That's good. See, here's my problem with that method, though, because in I feel like the idea of it is better than the actual execution because I find that all the chocolate just falls in just between the popcorn the pop. and it it's does. Yeah. It does, yeah. So um, like, we, need, we need a nice, light, not- airy chocolate that can sit right on the popcorn pieces. So, this, I mean, I this think- is like a Thing now because we're getting into like density and like yeah. weight <laughs> like we, mass we do gotta move it along but yeah that's a sorry we'll, we'll talk more no it's it's a good idea and, and i i wish we could talk for hours about it that's why i wanted to do this draft there's so many interesting conversations we couldn't have elsewhere um all right <clears throat> carrie what's gonna be your next pick oh right you get, okay. you get your last two so yes all right so um Speaking of snacks, um, one pet peeve of mine is, I have, for some reason, this happens all the time at the AMCs around us, is they'll be out of oh, what your favorite perfect. snack is, like your mm-hmm. movie theater snack that's mm-hmm. what you go to, and they don't have it. Like, you know, we that's went right. to one, and we had skipped breakfast, and I was like, well, I'll just get, this oh, is when I was pregnant. Uh, Chad remembers. And I was like, well, I'll just get like pretzel bites at the movie theater or something. We get to the movie theater and not only do they not have pretzel bites, they're basically out of stock of everything. Oh, oh my <laughs> it God. It was horrible. I was very cranky. Um, but even, you know, you get used to, you know, your favorite candy and you go to the movie theater and it's it's not there. It's so sad. Yeah. No, it's a good point. Another one is also like the soda machine because there's so many different combinations to where I feel like everyone has like their signature. Like Kelsey said, it's the root beer. For me, it's the cherry vanilla Coke. If they don't have cherry vanilla Coke. I'm like scrambling. I'm like, ah, oh, what am I going to do? Yeah. You know, I get nervous. Yeah. Um, and and it's, yes. it's totally that that vibe when they're out of your favorite thing. Like Just I, cherry I, Coke for me. Yeah. I do. I do. Coke. Yeah, that's great. Um, yeah. Any, any thoughts on this, Chad, when they're out of your favorite concessions? I mean, you're not a concessions guy, but if you were to. Well. I mean, I, I say I'm not generally a concessions person. Right. Like, there's You're something. Not the most. Well, I mean, my my go-to candy would be Twizzlers. Uh, mm. Carrie, fantastic. I freaking love Twizzlers. My mom um, loves Twizzlers. Yeah. And I, I, my uh, mom loves I, Twizzlers. I, and I don't, I don't think uh, red vines are good. I'll say it there. Oh, she loves red vines. <laughs> I'll be honest. I I don't think it's gonna come up. So I didn't like. It's okay to tip this, but one of the pet peeves on my list is red vines. That is a pet peeve of mine. You like just don't vines. like red vines either? No, I, I just, they annoy the shit out of me. Yeah. They are existent. <laughs> yeah, like literally on my list, number 32 is red vines. That's all I wrote yeah. down is, is a movie theater pet peeve. Because it's only a movie theaters I see them, and they just annoy the shit out of me. Yeah. Uh, it's like the Lazy Sunday, uh, Mr. Pibb and cra- red vines equals crazy delicious. Um, yeah. But I, love Twizzlers, though. I, agree I will that. say if they don't have Twizzlers or something like that, I'm fine. I'll just go to the movie. It's kind. Of, it's kind of annoying if you really wanted them. Right. Um, but then I. I think in Carrie's specific scenario there, if it's a case where you had to make a showtime and you're very hungry, you don't have time to run over to the Five Guys or whatever equivalent you have a little burger place, um, real quick, or you already scanned your ticket so you can't go out and get the burger. <laughs> Um, then yeah, I could find it being like very, very annoying. Um, especially if they're like out of popcorn too, which it feels oh like that's never going to be a thing. Maybe not, but who knows? You never know. I work at the Bubba Gump shrimp company and one day we ran out of shrimp. You, you would not believe it. We were the Bubba Gump burger palace for a day. Wow. Um, yeah. It was like nine days. So we were an hour to closing, but Hey, Kels, don't slander. That's actually, Sorry, I man. worked at Panera Bread and um, we you ran, bread? You ran, ran out of couple. bread. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. My favorite That's place funny. ever. Yeah, Nina's favorite place in the world is Panera Bread. Oh. Uh, Nina, Nina, if they had, let's say they sold uh, Panera products at a movie theater and they were out of them, would you be upset? Would that be a pet peeve? Yes. 
or, yeah, or in the context I... of movie theaters. Are, <laughs> Full does, stop. Yes. Peeve, yeah. Does this does this pet peeve annoy you as well? Being out of concessions. Yes, but it kind of ties into my number five. But my oh, okay. number five is different. All right. So we won't talk about it yet. Kelsey, any thoughts? Uh, yeah, pretty much just what you said, Dill. Like when gigs, you know, you have it in your heart what you want, and what I want is a bunch of cruncha. And uh, when they don't have it, I have to scramble for my for my second pick, which is usually just classic M and M's. Sometimes I get crazy, and I get a little crazy, and I get butterfingers, but that's only once in a while. <laughs> oh, whoa, scary! Um, I, I know, I know. You set that up, you were like, I'm crazy. Oh, oh. Yeah, no, that's great. Um, all right, Carrie, you get to round out your draft board with your fifth and final pick of the draft. What is it going to be? Okay. Hmm. Tough. It's the last one. Decide. Yeah, I'm trying. I have three that you know they're they're not my top picks, so I'm kind of I'm trying to think. I'll I'll do this one because it's a fun story. Um, my a pet peeve is um people doing it in the movie theater oh i know the specific story i believe oh uh, uh, is it yeah. insidious the last key is that uh, it was one of the insidious movies yeah. <laughs> i was gonna um, say so not just like making out he says like, no it. actually it's another movie i'm gonna be like how many instances <laughs> have you gone through I, I feel like no, we can allow so I, I feel like we can also I, I, maybe not rope making out in general into this because that was definitely on my list of like just stop like yeah so annoying, especially when it's making noise i don't know carrie continue yeah. your story i'd love to hear this, this yeah is crazy. So, chad before he got the earplugs had this thing where you know if people started chewing really loud he'd want to like move to a different section of the movie theater oh, which yeah. is like honestly very distracting i get very embarrassed about it like it's a whole then it's a whole deal chad's like Sitting here, like he just moves, and I'm like, I'm like, what are you? I follow him. I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, Carrie, they're literally like doing it up there. <laughs> and then, yeah, up there, yeah. where was it? Like a balcony in front of in front of us. Like, oh, it was in front of us. They and didn't get the back. Oh my god. No, they were in front Wait, of did... us, and not that far. Like one or two rows in front of us. Like not that far. And then oh, they like okay, <laughs> okay. They finished, and then they. Left. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't even stick around for the rest of the movie. I feel like they were just trying to scratch something off a bucket list or something. Like they were like, "All right, like these, we only a few days left or something. Let's get this out of the way." Or, they were teenagers. Like, are we talking, I think like, they had nowhere else to do it. Or are we talking, like third know? base or like doing it. I <laughs> sorry, I, I don't know. Like, 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 a full more. home run. Yeah, I don't know. Not um, I would say not penetration, probably, but um. okay, but enough to concern everyone. Yeah, wow, yeah. wow. <laughs> I didn't even write that down because I didn't even know that happened. Um, I, I know I knew recently someone did it at a Mets game, <laughs> like in the grandstand. But yeah, like wow. yeah, oh like goodness. way up high at City Field. Uh, wow, wilding out here. Yeah, mm -hmm. like I, I wrote down making out because I was like, that's annoying when people just make out. Like, enjoy the movie you paid for it. But now I'm like. Making out is, is innocent compared to that. Yeah, yeah. Like, make out all you want, but wow. God. And I think like also like making out kind of seems to be like that at least used to be. I don't know if it still is kind of like the thing that like young couples would do at a movie theater. Like you'd go there for that. Yeah, it's, it's like dark. it's a pet peeve, but it's like an initiation thing where like you kind of need to do it once in your life. But like, yeah. wow. Oh, my yeah. God. Um, that is ridiculous. This was a very specific, like, like one time occurrence. I've never seen it happen. Yeah, since. <laughs> but still, but, uh, but yeah, it was very weird, and it actually just makes a kind of a fun story. Yeah, um, that is so, a yeah. very fun story. I don't I know how I'm gonna find a picture questions. for the for the graphic, but we'll never forget um, Insidious: The Last Key. We'll always have it. <laughs> Did you stick around for the whole movie? Like, you guys just moved to the back. Yeah, yeah. Just do it okay. finish the movie. I no, they're not gonna over, leave. They're gonna two shows for the price of one. Why would they leave? Unless there's an emergency, I will never just like leave a movie. Wow. I just don't see the point. Wow. In, anyways. Yeah. Nina, have you ever seen anything like this? I found a um used condom. No, 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 <laughs> no. Wait, a rapper? Or oh, a an, actual, an actual condom. 
Mm. Like, yes. right. in the way, way, way back, way, way, way back row in the cup holder. Ew. 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 <laughs> See, this is why you need to clean up yes. after yourself wow. at the movie theater. The question was, was there another person involved or was were they? Doing it was the just cup in the cup holder, filled, used. Mm-hmm. Filled. <laughs> filled right, to the right, top. Right. <laughs> we need to <laughs> so Dylan, what's worse? The butter thing or that? <laughs> okay, listen, listen. And me and my friends did not sit there. We okay, wait, wait, wait. Up. Imagine though, you see you're waiting in line to get your butter on your popcorn, and this couple puts their butter on their popcorn, goes in the movie, you put your butter on it, you go in the movie, and then this couple starts fucking. Like that's gonna be like, oh god, they just touched the butter before but me. No what? one was there, it was just a used condom. Oh god, Nina filled in the cup. I'm gonna was throw up. York? Nina, this was in New York. Uh when it was Westfield. Oh, we're talking New Jersey. Oh, we're talking Rialto. Oh, oh the Rialto would Rialto. pull some shit Rialto like that. Would. That's so Rialto. That's wow. so that's Rialto. Been closed for, that's been closed for my, over um, four or five years. So you must have seen that when you were what? Like five footloose. Maybe. My footloose friend. Okay. Fresh All right. Year. A lot of things were cutting loose that day. All right. <laughs> let's move on to. Oh, my God. Let's move on, Kelsey. Your final pick. Okay. I don't think anyone could top that. No pun intended. That's, no, no, no. This is a that. this is a crazy conversation. I didn't think we were. Harry, ever that just blew my mind. Have. That was crazy. <laughs> that was wild. That is the wildest draft day pick I've ever heard. <laughs> okay, so this is kind of similar to a few things we've already talked about. We've talked about people who laugh too much. We've talked about people who make you get up and they shuffle into their seat when they're late. We talked about loud chewers. We talked about phones. This is another element of that. Yes, thank you for keeping up with my counting, Chad. Um, we love a list. I, okay, this bothers me for two reasons. One, it's just annoying and it's distracting. And it's when people are constantly getting up and leaving the theater and coming back and they're leaving the theater and they're coming back. I don't like it. First, this happened to me when I saw Talk to Me. That movie is an hour and a half. As far as movies goes, pretty standard. And if you're a Marvel fan, that is a such a short movie because you know Marvel movies two, two and a half hours long, easy. And it's it doesn't a waste short... a second. You can't exactly. Miss it. Like, yeah. And people are getting up multiple times throughout the movie. I'm like, this is an hour and thirty minutes. You can't hold it. It makes me think, <laughs> what are you doing outside of this movie theater? And also, you know, we live in America. I don't know what these people are leaving the movie theater and then coming back in for it makes me nervous yeah. so just park your keister into your seat and watch the movie you paid for and stop making me nervous yeah when i went to see um <laughs> actually i didn't go to see this uh, landon kelsey nina told me that when he went to see i think it was rogue one or last jedi or one no i i saw last Jedi. Again. it was rogue one he said there was a guy who like would come into the theater stand there and look at the audience for like 10 minutes and then leave <laughs> And then come back like 20 minutes later, stand, wouldn't look at the screen once. And I was I'd if leave. that had happened to me, I would leave. Yes. I, I would be like, I'm gonna die. Um, I'd actually leave, I think, because the next time that guy he's just sussing out his target to that point. I'm like, you're not playing target practice maybe, with maybe my ass. Like, I'm out of like, here. Maybe it was like Felicity Jones in makeup and she was seeing if the audience liked the movie. Like, oh, are, are they liking it? <laughs> Otherwise, not acceptable. Um, I would have put my hand to cover my face if they were like recording me or whatever. Yeah, they weren't recording, but yeah, it's it's scary. Um, anyone else have have pet peeves well, with that? Leaving? I, was, I mean, it goes hand in hand with Nina's, but yeah. I was actually just gonna say, like, add kind of like in general for like all of like not all, but most of our pet peeves, I think, could be solved if they would do what I had to do when I worked at a movie theater. But I don't think they really do this anymore. Is actually have theater employees like patrol the theaters and just look out for people fucking around or you know yeah. having sex in the uh, insidious <laughs> or you yeah. know yeah. uh anything really like, they, they can solve a lot of issues that way I think. yeah because in what the olden days it was like counter. yeah in the old days it was like movies were treated almost like uh theater was not not like you would get dressed up and shit but it was like an event like you know people yeah. would you know take and, it seriously yeah and you know what could help nina is if you had bruce campbell uh, stop you from entering the theater if you're late and you're like, it ruins the, the ambiance. Yeah, like literally tell you you can't come in. You can't. Like once you uh, leave, you can't We come should back. bring that back. We should bring that <laughs> back. That would be great. Yeah. 
Yeah, and then like also, an intermission for anyone who wants to use a bathroom, and then that's it. Intermission, that's absolutely. Yeah, Asteroid City had and one, didn't it? It did. No. Oh, did it? Some it, versions might have. It was it it's it's like it. intermission optional, but it was only like two minutes. It was. Uh, gotcha. it, it wasn't even two minutes. It was like yeah, fifteen seconds. Three seconds. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Any other thoughts on this pick? It's a good pick. I think it's, yeah. it's great it value. Especially because around. it was a scary movie that it, I was just, I'm already on edge because I'm watching the scary movie and now all these people are getting up. I didn't yeah. like it. One of my, one of my honorable mentions has to do with that very specific thing, but we'll get there when we get there. I'll kind of like glance, I think like, like it's a, it's a slight distraction when you just see someone moving just in mm -hmm. general, but I don't know if I've necessarily remember anyone's like one specific person acting shifty right. and like going in, going out, going in, going out, going in. Like, I mean, I'm not going to be mad at people going to the bathroom, but right. if it's specifically like a, like an issue. Right. Well, also Kelsey, when, I remember when we saw Shang-Chi, there were kids who were just kept running to go to the bathroom. And that's a long movie, but like, yeah. it was also their flip-flops were so loud. They were wearing flip-flops and they would run because they didn't want to miss yeah. a movie. Like genuinely they wanted, but it was like to go get more popcorn. <laughs> then they would come back and they're like, oh, we need our candy. Go I get candy. Oh, clip, clop, clip, 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 clop. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fucking sit down. Yeah. It doesn't even need to be shit for people, but just in general, like people coming and going, coming and going. It's like get everything at once. You don't need to be like, oh wait, let's get pretzel bites too. Oh wait, let's get sodas too. Like just get everything in one. Oh lord. I have noticed that sometimes it'll just be like, you know, some showings, it's just like one person or one group and they're constantly in and out of the theater. Yes. I'm like and, or like a whole family that does that and like the parents don't actually like control their children. Oh, and I'll say that's a whole other discussion for another time, Chad. <laughs> we tried to be considerate of this pet peeve when when I was pregnant and had to go to the bathroom. You know, I I did have to go at least twice. Well, during I mean, you would also school. generally sit on We'd the sit side. on the aisle on an aisle. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I love an aisle seat because it's also more leg room. So if it's not a recliner, like I love an aisle seat. It's my go to. Yeah. Um, if as long as there's no lights, as Nina said. All right, Nina, your final pick. What's going to be your last pick in the draft? All right. Well, this is really specific to me because I know most people are soda drinkers and I'm not. Oh, yeah. Um, so when I go to a movie, I get Slurpees because I love the Ices. blue. Love blue raspberry Slurpee. Icy. Yes. Blue raspberry ices are my go-to with my popcorn and my bunch crunch. But this recently actually nice. happened to me in Wawa, not the movie theater, but it still has to do with the movie theater. It's happened to me, I think, once in a movie theater, but it's when the Slurpee machine is literal straight liquid. Ugh. Oh! But then I don't have a drink, and I don't want to drink water because I'm at the movies. I kind of want... That's not fun. So, yeah. it, I don't drink soda, so I, I don't have a drink with my popcorn and candy. So, it, I just... I, I hate that. It's just yeah. straight liquid. It's like juice. You don't you don't want it. It's like, just the syrup. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. we have them at, at the restaurant that I work at. Like, we have icy machines, and, and it breaks down often. Like, it's, it's they're a pain to fix, but it's like... You would think for a movie theater they would keep that attended really well. That's a good point. I, I haven't thought of that. I thought you were going somewhere else with the ICs, and I don't know if Chad is going to pick it, so I might tip a pick here. But um, the paper straws, how are you going to sit through a two hour, two and a half hour movie and expect that straw to hold up the whole time? But I didn't want to yeah. make it a pick. Yeah. I didn't want to make it a pick only because it's like that's anti environmentalist. If I'm like, yeah. oh, paper yeah. straws suck, but it it, it does it, for an icy. Do. Yeah, for an icy paper straws suck. Yeah. But yeah, I melted ices and no ice in the ices. Yeah, that's, and I that's and I don't like any of the other flavors. I only like blue. So if cherry's right. working, I'm not gonna want cherry. I'm gonna want blue raspberry. Oh, that's a good point. It's a good it's a good drink. Anyone else an icy fan? Oh yeah. yeah. Oh Carrie yeah. And I get the. I mean, I love soda, but Carrie and I will often get ices. Yeah. To share and I don't um, dabble enough in it. I should. It's it's it is kind of like one of those things to where. I mean, ICs are kind of just messy in general, but yeah, if it's, and yeah, it's not specific to movie theaters, but it is also a problem in the theaters. And it's like one of those things too, where it kind of relates a little bit to the theater being out of something. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, it's like a whole, a whole job, like replacing the, you know, I mean, it used to be also uh, kind of related to this when I worked at the movie theater, you'd have to replace like the soda thing. So sometimes you'll get a Sprite and it ended up not being soda. Like there's no syrup in there. So there's like similar kind of things 
to that and it's just yeah if you don't get the drink that you want it, it really sucks mm -hmm. and um yeah that that liquid thing is gross so yeah mm -hmm. i agree cool. any other thoughts on icy liquid all righty. Uh, great pick. Uh, all right. My final pick. I was going to go with my joke pick, which is the one I texted Kelsey about. It's when people don't clap at the uh, Nicole Kidman ad, but like people don't know they have to, you know, it's not like a written rule. So like, I'm not going to hold it against them for not clapping. Um, I don't do so, that. <laughs> well, Chad, that's a pet. You do? I, I, I sit there no. and I do a it's golf laugh. I'm not necessarily most, always like. <laughs> in most Daytime showings I go to, there's no clapping. But every night screening I'm at, there's always applause at the end. But again, that's it's a regional thing for it's sure. A, it's a regional <laughs> thing, I think. Yeah, because there's a lot of young people in the city that are also like obsessed with the meme culture, where they like need to like do that. Um, I I I just think that's a, a meme answer, so I'm not gonna pick that. But it was just a funny joke. I was gonna if I had the very very last pick of the draft, I might have. But uh, there's actually something that does genuinely like annoy me, and this is just like. I could fix this by showing up to the movies late, but if I'm going to get there for trailers, whenever they play the same trailers over and over and over, that annoys me. That's a pet peeve just because it's like, and I know I've already talked privately with Chad about this. Like sometimes it's like, yeah, you can just tune out the trailer, but if I'm like, if I don't have anything going on on my phone or I don't have internet connection, I don't want to like, and I don't have anyone to talk to. It's like literally like I'm going to watch the trailers. And if I've seen the same at the point of, when this really annoyed me, it was Ant-Man Quantumania. When I'm seeing that trailer over and over and over and over and over again, I'm like, God. But then I started going to the movies 20 minutes late because of that. And then I missed the first five minutes of Dead Reckoning Part 1 because some movies just don't have 25 minutes of trailers. So it's the inconsistency of trailer length and the non-variety in the trailers themselves. Now, sometimes you'll get a trailer that's really great, that's great to watch every time. The Wakanda Forever trailer was a banger every time it happened. The Star is Born trailer was a banger every time it happened, but you very rarely get those trailers that are so good you can watch it 50 times, especially, and that's also an issue for someone who goes to the movies a lot. If you don't go to the movies a lot, it's not a big issue, but in the fifth round, I figured that would be a good last pick because it's, you know, personal to me. I hate seeing the same trailers over and over again. I would love it if maybe by genre, if it's a horror film, show me more, more horror trailers. If it's an indie, yeah. show me indie trailers. There's one theater that I think mm -hmm. does that well. It's Lincoln Square because they play so many indies. They're actually advertising indies that they're going to have. But the big ones that are only showing blockbuster films are only showing blockbuster trailers. Mm -hmm. And it's like annoying yeah. to the point where I overanalyze. Like I knew, spoiler alert, a character was going to survive Guardians 3 because the last shot of the Guardians 3 trailer was that character cocking the gun and saying, I'm tired of running. And that shot hadn't happened in the movie yet, so I knew he had to survive. It's like that kind of thing where I start putting yeah. those pieces together involuntarily. I'm not trying to do it, but I do because I just see the same trailers over and over and over again. So that's a me problem, but I'm sure some people can agree with it. I mean, Chad, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, it, it makes sense. Like, I, th I think, like, the trailers just really need to be uh, collated. It's not the right word. What is it? Uh, choreographed. Sure. That's the right word. Oh, Cur curated? curated. That's it. They need to be like curated better. I think um, just in general, um, because, well, there, there's a lot of different issues. So you do have like the, the so many trailers before the movie, which can be a good thing and a bad thing. Like, well, you yeah. I know I have time now. Yeah, I originally had that as my pet peeve, but then the more we talked about some of our other pet peeves, I was like, you know what? The length of trailers allows us to have our time at, if their True. lines are long or if there's someone who's coming in late, like to where I honestly am okay with the buffer because it prevents other things. But Absolutely. Yeah. Um, but like repeating uh, the trailers um, over and over, yeah, I can kind of see that just you – know, and then also it just kind of like makes especially like certain moments in movies be like, you know – all right, I've seen that so many times now. I don't care about it in the actual movie when I see it. Like specifically, um, and I'm not talking about like spoilers, which is not normally a problem for me, but I know it's a problem for other people for sure. But like, I remember like before uh, Thor Ragnarok came out, it was that whole like, yes, he's a friend from work. And I'm like, over and over yeah. and over. Or in mm. Eternals, the Ikea joke of the yeah. table is from Ikea. <laughs> you know? Yep, yep. So <laughs> it, it's often a lot of those, and it is like the big block push. The other thing that kind of annoys me, and I thought about maybe bringing this up, but then I was like, well, I don't know if like this is more pet peeve for like the, the movie movie or the, the, the trailers. It's not like the movie theater's fault, 
but like the curate or the curating of the things, it's like, I don't like when you go to see, and this is also like the MPAA kind of issue where you go to see and so rated R yeah. is like a wide uh, birth of films and like most things are like rated R these days. So you'll go and you'll be seeing something. You're like, why is this even rated R? And then they'll show a red band trailer for like the wackiest like sex comedy that's coming near you. And then you're like, okay, I didn't want to see any of that shit. Right. Um, or maybe say I'm taking like my kid and I'm like, look, I'm, I'm actually being responsible. I've looked things up in this movie. I know what's going to be in it. It's just kind of some salty language maybe. Uh, or it's like a little bit of violence that I'm okay with. But then they have like crazy shit. In like a trailer of like I don't know who thought about doing red band trailer, but those are best. The, the best worst example of that is when I saw Blue Beetle. There was a Paw Patrol trailer because you know Blue Beetle. There's a lot of kids going oh, to see DC. There's a Paw Patrol trailer. The very next trailer after that, The Nun Two. So you're literally going from oh that looks fun. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna take my friends to go see that. <gasps> oh no! Like it's just like oh, it's like such a drastic pivot. I'm like what? yeah. Because I mean, there's thing. gonna be older kids yeah. who want to see the nun because it's PG-13. It's not R. And then you have kids who are gonna see Paw Patrol because they're young kids seeing Blue Beetle too. It's like you gotta be consistent. Why would you show the nun too in a Blue Beetle? I don't know. And right after Paw Patrol, that was the humor of it. Cause I was like, that's yeah. gold. Like, of course, someone probably was like, ha this is, this is going to be funny. Let's well, traumatize these kids. You are a supporter of, um, what is it? Saw Patrol, right? Oh, Saw Patrol is going to yeah. be a blast, but I yeah. know what I'm signing up for. I know I'm going to go watch Paw Patrol and then go watch Saw afterwards. I'm not going to be bamboozled, but yeah. Anyone else, uh, thoughts on trailers and, and the variety or the length of trailers, just trailers in general? Any pet peeves related? Carrie, anything? Yeah, I mean, I 100% agree with you, Dylan. Like, there have been movies I, like, literally did not want to go see because I had seen the trailer so many yes. times. Mm -hmm. um, and, yeah, I, and also stuff does get spoiled. There are some movies that are better if you don't see the trailer that gives everything away and, like... Yeah. You're, you're a captive audience. Like if you're in the theater, you know, yeah. it's kind of, unless you're going to like go like this. Right. Yeah, exactly. It's like, it's almost a skill to be able to tune it out, which is why I'm always impressed when Chad tells me, he's like, I, I was able to tune it out. I'm impressed because it's like, sometimes I, it's hard for me to, yeah. to do that. But yeah. It's I wish I had that hyper focus, but, and we also had um, a mutual acquaintance, um, Dylan and I, uh, in, in a Discord that we share who um, uh, did not want to go see the Gran Turismo movie because he said, fuck that trailer. <laughs> yeah, because the trailer pretty much gives you everything you need to know. I did like that yeah. movie, but yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, Kelsey, any thoughts on trailers? Well, I I kind of, like, I get it. Once you see something way too much, you you know, you, you pretty much, you're like, okay, so I've seen that movie, basically. But I kind of feel the opposite, where I'm like, some movies, like, I just don't feel like get advertised enough yeah. Or like well, some point, trailers, yeah. like have variety. I'm like doing the same ones. Like I feel like Joyride. Like I didn't see the trailer enough for that movie before it came out. Like that movie is barely advertised. There's some really great indies it, that have come well out because of it. Yeah, exactly. That I had hadn't seen the trailer enough. But when I do watch the trailer, like I was like, oh my god, that that looks so cute and fun. Like I I want to see that. And then you just like you see the trailer that one time, and then you never see it again. And I'm like, I don't know if this has something to do with like the bigger movies just having more money to pay for advertisements or, or what's going on. But yeah, you're, you're yeah. so right, Jill. I didn't even think of this, but now you've you've brought it to the forefront of my brain. You've tra Thank changed you. my preview yeah. watching experience forever. That being said, the Fallout and Star is Born trailers uh, were the best double feature of 2018 ever. The trailers, not the movies. The movies are great, but like watching the Fallout, Mission Impossible Fallout trailer, and then watching the Star is Born shallow trailer literally made my made my 2018. So like that was the one exception of like, okay, I can, I'm going to go for the trailers. Um, they're so good. Nina, any thoughts on trailers? I know you don't go to the movies as much, but. Yeah, I mean, I had something similar on my long list about just the time of it uh yeah. but i will say yeah yeah all right uh chad last pick the mr irrelevant pick what is going to be your final pick in the draft um and this is this is the final pick this is the final pick okay so i'll, I'll bring up maybe yeah, you can bring up some honorable mentions if you're in my honorable mention um i'm gonna go with something that 
I honestly think this is becoming a problem for a lot of people. Um, and so much so that I actually saw like a YouTube video where someone said, you know, why are we constantly doing this now when we watch movies specifically? And it's, and I've, I've kind of been known in, in certain circles to kind of like be negative about like the theater experience. And it's a lot of the pet peeves that I've brought up, um, is our reasons because of it, mm -hmm. but there's also just some reasons that I think the home watching experience is better, especially if you can have, you know, a, a nice setup with, you know, and you can control your environment. A lot of people can't, I get that. And it's just, it, it's not as nice um, at the end of the day as a theater experience, but there are some negatives um, for me and I imagine some, some other people. And, and I know there's showings that actually do this, but I want it to be more of a widespread thing. And I want movies to just generally have subtitles. Yes! Woo! Just, yeah! Just, I want that actually to kind of be the norm. And I know there are some people, because I've said this before, and there was at least one person who's pushed back on me with that, where they're like, I don't want that. Like, that's not like a part of the movie. That's not like something that needs to be. And I get it. Like if, you know, you, you know, you just want to see what the, the director wanted you to see. And it's not subtitles. If it's not like a like international film or something like that with like Spanish subtitle, or I don't know uh, if they have English subtitles yeah. in a different country or something like that. But I just want it to be at least a more widespread thing. Cause now, the um, the go to the default is no subtitles, and I'm like, I know Dylan has hearing issues. I don't necessarily have. I guess I do I, a little bit because Carrie, I think, says the TV's too loud, and I'm like, it's perfect. Um, but <laughs> um, the, the thing about it is, uh, I don't know. It's just also because subtitles is a part of my attention like focusing it helps you things. focus for sure there's Being so many it. different um times when i'm just like okay i missed that bit of oppenheimer was a big big thing i've only seen oppenheimer once i know most i know the gist of what happened in that movie and i will see the it again when i buy it on blu-ray or whatever and i'll actually put on subtitles and be able to focus on the entire dialogue but, and I know this is sometimes an issue also with Christopher Nolan movies specifically. People said it wasn't with this, but I just, I had trouble focusing a lot of the times on people talking. So yeah, I just want it to at least be a more widespread thing, but I also am like, why not make that the default? Yeah. Where you also, it could be a sound mixing issue of the theater itself too, which kind of plays into it. I wrote like sound mix issues slash no subtitles as your pet peeve, because it could be the, the mixing yeah. aids in the, non and so because i know they have specific like subtitle theater i mean they have specific which is great and they have like sensory like people with like sensory issues and mm -hmm. stuff like they'll have like specific showings like days or like a you know mommy yeah. take your kid day to the thing mm -hmm. they'll have specific stuff like that which is great but it's also like i i don't think of myself as like i need to go to a special showing so that i can you know, I just want to go to the regular show. And it might not work in your schedule either, you know. Yeah, exactly. Because it's like like this one debt time or whatever. You can go to this, you know, subtitle thing. And it's like, I think I've seen that like more people nowadays kind of need subtitles. I don't know why, but there's like a science behind it or something. Yeah, yeah. that's a great pick. Just like uh, no subtitles slash sound issues, you know, like that's that's a great pick. My, yeah. I also had like sound mixing and projection issues as well, because like I think that could, you know, sometimes I feel like I'm going blind, but it's not because the projector's blurry or I feel like I can't hear something, but it's just because the sound mix is off. But also having subtitles would fix all of that, you know, um, yep. to where it could be poorly mixed, but it wouldn't matter because you could still read it. Um, Nina, Kelsey, Carrie, do any of you have issues in terms of understanding dialogue and wanting subtitles there? Because I know that is like a hundred percent something I also share with Chad. Like I would love subtitles in every showing. I have poor sound quality and poor projection on my list. Um, just because I have experienced bad, like blurriness or whatever, but mm -hmm. I'm not a fan of subtitles. I find them really <laughs> distraction, distracting for me. Like even with like 
TV shows I watch at home, like I, mm-hmm. I just can't have subtitles on. So I don't think I would want that, but mm-hmm. I can see how people would want it. Yeah. Kelsey, are you, I think you're also a no subtitle gal, right? Um, yeah, this is a really polarizing, I feel like you're either a subtitles person or you're not. And mm-hmm. I tend to feel like as someone who's not a subtitles person that I'm actually in the minority. I feel like the majority of people like having subtitles on because they just like miss it or like, I don't know, I guess they just miss the dialogue. I'll tell you something though, having subtitles would have really helped me during Spider-Man No Way Home. Yeah, but alas, right. <laughs> uh, but yeah. I, I definitely think that, you know, as an accessibility thing, like obviously I want everyone to be able to enjoy a movie experience. So maybe it should be, you know, offered as more often than it is. Mm -hmm. Uh, But as far as like me, like I will never choose to like see a movie if it, if like the theater itself has subtitles on, because I'll just be reading the whole time and then I'll miss all like the fun stuff. But like, I feel like your brain after like five, because the first five minutes, I feel no. like, yeah, it's like, oh, no, not for you. Okay. For me, I'm it's so like, I'm so sorry, but it, it, no, I, I don't adjust. And that's I that's, just and keep that's also reading the, way the whole we le- time. Yeah. The way we learn, the way we process information too, is very different person to person, like very, yeah. exactly. just the way brains work. Carrie, yeah, uh, we're two, two split. Where do you lie on the, on the divide? I, I'm kind <laughs> of. I mean, I I could go either way. Like, I'm fine with it. You're the Switzerland. (laughs) Subtitles. But I'll say the thing that annoys me more. um, But I also would not mind if every movie, like, in the theater had subtitles. I'd be fine with it. Um, The thing that annoys me more is actually at home. And the sound mixing is really off. Like, whether it's a movie or television show, Mm -hmm. like, the music or certain parts will be insanely loud. And then the dialogue Mm -hmm. is yeah and yeah it drives me insane mm-hmm. yeah or you know what's so annoying when you're like watching a movie i know this is gonna sound crazy because like who watches something when like commercials play but like when you're watching a movie and the movie's like a normal volume but then it like cuts to commercial and the commercials oh are God. so loud all of a sudden yeah, yeah i'm like yeah. what happened there used to be a law where like commercials had to be a certain volume i think it mm-hmm. no longer exists and it's not a broadcasting; it's like a, a streaming service thing, like a streaming. Hulu. Yeah, it's like that's yeah. There's got to be that. some sort of exception if you're on the well, internet. because they want to sell the product. So yeah. they're gonna, if you're falling asleep, oh, we got to wake you up to sell you this uh, this new type of chocolate or whatever. I don't know. So annoying. Um, I I also think because I I did watch a video. I think it has something to do too with where they talk about people are more so like Kelsey said that you know non-subtitled people might be in the minority i have no idea but um i think they were talking about how there's like a difference in how filmmakers like record sound and stuff like i think they they used to pay more attention to maybe they used to like do more individually sound things so like i don't know if like now they don't pay as much attention to it so like for me i think it is kind of a thing to where I'm not like comprehending everything everybody's saying unless the subtitles are there. So I'm like that with Dylan where I'm like, I'm not sitting like, I will have to read it if it's like a, a foreign language uh, movie and I have to read the the subtitles because of that. Sometimes I'll, mm-hmm. you know, not watch a movie right away. I'll go, I'll watch that one later because I have to hyper-focus on the subtitles. Yeah. With this one, it's just a, I'm watching what's going on, but then the subtitles kind of like in, register in my head so that I can comprehend what is going on. I don't know. It's weird. I'm weird. Maybe no, that, you know, it's not. Chad, it's, I'm, I'm with you. So Chad yeah. and I are pro subtitles. Kelsey and Nina are anti carriers could do with them, could do without them. Doesn't really matter. Um, but that's a very, <laughs> very awesome, interesting debate to end this draft on kind of like a more positive note, not being like, yo, people suck, but like, no, it's just like a general thing that would be yeah. more helpful to have in theaters, which is great. Uh, ending things on a positive considering we've been a little negative in this draft, but it's because we want to make theaters better because yeah. AMC makes movies better. Now AMC needs to make their theaters better. Uh, <laughs> hear that, Nicole? Nicole, add that to your monologue. Um, all right, I'm just going to recap everyone's draft board and then we can get into some honorable mentions. Chad, 
Do you have something to say? I was just gonna say I want to maybe Nicole can go around cleaning the theaters and like yeah. make sure everybody is nice oh and God. safe. And imagine if know, after the, every she movie, can clean the the butter nozzles for yeah. us. And maybe after every movie, they should play an ad where she's like leaving the theater and cleaning up after everyone. Like, <laughs> that'd be funny. All right, I'm gonna recap everyone's drafts. Um, they're very specific, but I tried to abbreviate them as best as I could. Uh, so Carrie's draft board: smelly outside food being brought in two theater. Uh, bathroom cleanliness, bathrooms located outside the ticket scanner and the re-entry anxiety that comes with it, um, out of your favorite snack or concession, uh, doing it in the theater. <laughs> Here's Kelsey's board. Leaving garbage behind, buttery hands, shared armrests, melting chocolate candy and chocolatey hands and clothing, meandering in and out of the theater. Nina's draft board. Latecomers making you get up out of your chair, talking during a movie, bright aisle lights, long concession lines, and ices that have no slush to them, just straight up liquid. Dylan's draft board. Good mice. List. Mice. When the theater isn't full and a stranger sits right next to you. Nowhere to put your snacks when you need to go to the bathroom. Self-serve butter germs. And no variety in trailers. Chad's lineup. Sound of crunching popcorn slash snacks. Crinkling bags slash wrappers. Inappropriately timed laughter or laughing too much using your phone, and then sound mix issues that lead to needing of subtitles or lack of subtitles in general. All right, there are draft boards. Very, very solid, but we, of course, have to mention some honorable mentions. We don't have to share all our lists, but we can if we want. Uh, Nina, you're the first, uh, You're the. first. this is your first time here at Draft Day, so I'll let you take it away first. If you have any honorable mentions you would like to share, I don't think we need to necessarily elaborate too much on our honorable mentions uh, just because for the sake of time, but if you just want to rattle off what else you had on your list, and if you do need to explain anything further, feel free to. Right, I have tall people sitting in front of me, like mm. the tall head in front of you. Good one. Um, yes. News Can't still relate. going on after the listed showtime. Uh, mm. Babies mm -hmm. crying. Okay. Um, having to go to the bathroom <laughs> and missing the movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like a person. Yeah. Um, popcorn and gross wrappers all over the floor. Um, butter pop butter machine not working, so you have to eat dry popcorn. Because they were out of butter when I saw. Oh, what are we heathens? We don't do that. Uh, I do. <laughs> they were out of butter when I saw Little Mermaid, so I had to go to a different machine. Oh. Um, the people agony. slurping their drinks when they only have ice left, so you hear the like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is all me. I do that all the time. The <sighs> yeah, oh I do that all God. the time. And then this one was Dad's. People spoiling the movie as they walk out because he said when he saw Star Wars, a boy came out and said. Oh my God, Darth Vader is Luke's dad. Uh, <laughs> Kelsey, I'm sorry. I know you haven't seen that movie. I, you didn't catch that spoiler, right? No. Wait, what? Okay, good, good. Sorry. Oh, no, it's good. We Nina, Nina just accidentally spoiled Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back for you. So it's good that you didn't hear. Um, yeah, no, that's a the good first one. I forgot one? about that. Is that the no, first the one ever one. made? Oh, no, the second okay. one, The Empire Strikes I don't know. Back. Yeah. No, it's, okay. it's a spoiler about someone's. No, I'm not going to say it. Um, and then. Um, my brother Jake's was kids rocking the chairs in front of you. Oh my god, or mm -hmm. kicking behind you. Uh, that's yeah, good. the kicking uh, behind. I, have a I had the kicking, I had uh, kicking. Yeah, that's a good listen. I also listening. had like on the app sold out tickets for that showtime you want. Mm -hmm. Um, poor video and sound quality, uncomfortable chairs, uh, stale popcorn, slurpy machine being straight liquid. Oh, I did that one. Um, yeah. the theater being too cold or too hot. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh huh. And then people sitting in your assigned seat when you get there. Wow, that is that could be a a draft in and of its own. That's a lot of honorable mentions. Yeah. I'm sure we have more. Uh, Kelsey, what are some of your honorable mentions? Um, well, I had someone kicking my seat. Hmm. Oh God, I fucking hate that. And uh, <laughs> also the tall per when someone tall sits in front of you. I'm five feet tall. I I think I should get a booster seat sometimes when I'm at the movies. Um, I also just hate when, the, when I think that all theaters at this point should be stadium seating because that yeah. would just eliminate yeah. the problem right there. I hate when it's like flat. I only like a stadium seat and like a recliner mm -hmm. situation because I'm spoiled these days. I don't know. Um, oh, I hate when you see when you go to the Dolby screen and it curves and you're not exactly in the middle. So then you're kind of like off to the side and then you have to like suffer because it's like curved. Oh, hmm. I don't like that. Hmm. Um, and um, I think I think that's uh, all I all I had. That's all she wrote. Cool. 
Carrie, any honorable mentions for you? Yeah. Um, I would say in addition to like non reclined seating or non um, stadium seating, uh, like all the seats should be like that. You know, it's not leather. It's like kind of plasticky material. Mm. Very easy to be mm -hmm. wiped down. Because right. yeah. leather, you know, if you will. Yeah. Because um, now we just like, especially at our local AMC, like I, I hate going to shows that aren't in Dolby or IMAX because the rest of the theaters are like old fabric that has mm. so many stains on it by this point. And it yeah. Yeah. me out. Um. The only other thing I think I had that wasn't mentioned yet was in some theater, and I think we did touch on this though. So in some theaters, the seats are just way too close to like the barrier in front. And oh, so yeah. like people do like, I, I need to put this at you, like you do have to stand up to let people in. And I'm just like, if you're going to redesign the theater to have stadium seating yeah. or line seating, just, just space them out a little bit at this point. Yep. Yeah. All right, Chad, any honorable mentions? Um, yeah, so I had, uh, let's see, I did have the kicking the back of the seat. I started because I was like, and it wasn't even like, uh, like a kid doing it. It was like a, like a, like a grown up, I believe, because I'm not like going to turn my full self around to stare at the person right behind me. And, and then it was like, we, we have a problem kind of a deals and you know, cause I'm also like no confrontation. And then yeah. I'm just like, but sitting there the whole time, like, is this an adult doing this to me right now? Is, yeah. is this like really happening in my lifetime that I'm, that's happening right now. Um, and then uh, let's see. And I already mentioned this, but like, yeah, it's also for like talking, but like repeating lines from the movie, like right after they say the line and the, you know, that type of thing. Um, let's see. Um, I had one. Oh, it's like general, and Dylan knows about this because I've recently had to solicit his help for it. But like, generally, like now that we're doing, it's not just going to get like a, a ticket stub and all that. It's like apps, but just yeah. like general app issues, like you know, uh, Taylor, tickets Taylor Swift drops a concert and then the whole damn thing blows up, you know. <laughs> or sorry, that was me. <laughs> <laughs> but just generally. Um, you know, when you have a thing to where, oh, this was another one I should have picked, actually, maybe instead of the phone usage. But, and this is specific to AMC, where they should at least give you four and not three, just four shows. Um, but also just like generally like mm -hmm. the whole system to where you have uh, this big system, uh, app system that you use and you reserve tickets that way. It's supposed to be very streamlined, very easy, but then you go and you have like this thing where you have to go to the theater and explain like, no, I haven't seen the allotted amount. Um, I actually have another thing, but I have reservations, but I still should be able to see my allotted yeah. amount this week. And you go and explain that to them and they don't know what the fuck is going on. And then you're just like, I, I, who do I ask? Right. So, you know, I did contact the, the that Twitter thing that you told me to do. Did and they, help? they didn't help me right away. So we still had to go to like a Regal. But they did give me like $25 in credit. There you go. Get yeah. the credit. So um, go. <laughs> I'm going to just make up something now. To get <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, all right. My pet peeves. Some of them are very weird and specific. I mean, making out was one of them. I didn't realize there could be anything beyond it. But Carrie did enlighten me. Um, uh, yeah, uh, uh, when pe oh, when people don't clap at the AMC ad, Nicole Kidman, um, when the regular line goes faster than the A-list line, a trailer length, um, smelly theaters in general, not just outside food, but just the smell of them sometimes can be a, a lot worn out seats. As Carrie said, a uh, smoking and vaping in the theaters, very popular nowadays. Um, especially with like when there's a projector and a cloud of smoke goes up, the whole frame just gets blurry for like. 10 seconds um projector out of focus when you want to use the bathroom but don't want to miss the movie stale popcorn um oh this is a new york thing bed bugs not oh, a fan i've never Lord. had to deal with them but they are very much a thing um in new Jesus. york movie theaters that they've they've had to shut movie theaters down and clean them and reopen them um but luckily it's only really two big theaters in the city that have had bed bug issues um 
when they're out of your favorite soda and candy overpriced food and concessions in general just it's way too expensive um way too expensive parking if if it's like a, a local movie theater where the parking sucks parking can suck but i you know that was a very low on my list uh sitting too close to the screen if you really want to make it opening night and you can only get the front row that sucks that was darby um, yeah. limited release windows in general just the fact that like some movies are only around for a week and you miss them and it's like what the hell like why are you uh, keeping little mermaid in theaters for a month when you could put theater camp in for two or three weeks um bad sound balance newbie always annoyed me uh crinkling candy wrappers uh kicking the chair spilling snacks no recliners in general i, I love a recliner I hate when there is no recliner sold out screenings and then Another one, when you can hear other movies in your theater. So like oh. if, if a scene is really quiet and you hear like something loud in the other theater. Like, yeah. I, I feel like when I watched Pitch mm. Perfect 3, I was really listening to The Last Jedi the whole time because uh. I literally heard, <laughs> I, I could hear direct scenes and dialogue. I was like, I know what's happening there because I, I had seen that movie already. I was like, I don't care about Pitch Perfect 3 now. I just want to go see that. Um, Red Vines, um, the, <laughs> the, the, the Bavarian legend. Does everyone know what the Bavarian legend is? It is the, the big largest- pretzel. The largest pretzel Ooh. ever sold at a establishment ever. It's like this giant pretzel that AMC does that comes with like a million warnings about sodium and calories. And like, it's, it's said to have caused very bad health issues, but they still sell it anyway. I just think it's obnoxious. Like, why are you going to get this big ass pretzel at the movies? Just like get popcorn, get mini pretzel bites. Like the Bavarian legend is just so extra. It's, it, it thinks it's so cool, um, but it's really not. And then the last thing that I added during the conversation that I think Kelsey made me think of when she was talking about people coming in and out of the theater and the scary sketchiness, costumes. Barbie is okay. You can wear pink to Barbie. But yeah. if you're going to come to the nun too and wear a nun costume, uh, I am going to scream. I am going to piss my pants. Uh, when I saw the Joker, there was a guy dedication. in the front row dressed as the Joker. Do not do that because I <laughs> think I'm going to be on the news the next morning as the guy who got killed at a movie theater because some guy dressed up as the Joker and blew it up. So that is why, please, if you're going to wear a costume, at least make your face fully visible. Like if you're going to come as Spider-Man, don't put on the whole Spider-Man outfit because I had someone when I saw Into the Spider-Verse run in and start doing flips and shit in front of the screen <laughs> when the trailers were playing. And I'm like, holy shit, it's Spider-Man. But it was also very scary. So if you're going to come in a costume, make your face visible because it scares people. I don't want to see Mario when I'm watching the Mario movie. I want to see not, none of that. Chad? Yeah, just just to, to piggyback off of the, the clapping during the Nicole Kidman thing. Yes. Do, you, did you say that people in New York will like always clap at the end of every movie? No, always clap no, no, at no. the end of the Nicole Kidman ad. So we After make movies Nicole better. Because and clapping... they'll also clap at the beginning when she steps in the puddle. Everyone will be like, woo! It'll be like a woo! That's all you yeah. get. So woo! Yeah. And then at the That's end, not a thing cool. here. Um, but sometimes people will <laughs> clap at the end of movies, and I always, I always whisper like nerds. Like, yeah, like, I mean, uh, hey, oh, I people clap after an airplane ride I'm like, when the well, pilot can't hear it. I don't care. Yeah, the I'm like the filmmakers aren't here, guys. Like if this was Sunday, they are. yeah, I was gonna say Sunday. Yeah. Maybe but, in California or New York that you might have. Yeah, I don't mind up. that just because it's like it's kind of the rush of like, oh, now I can make noise. Ah. Ah, that was great um kind of like a yeah. release uh, but if you've been talking the whole movie yeah don't clap because you probably missed it um yeah that's great uh, yeah nicole kidman always gets great i mean i've once had a whole auditorium of people like chant it back to her movies feel heartbreak heartbreak feels good in a place oh like yeah this. people like to talk along with it now yeah. they like if say all the like, lines if you go to like a friday words. if you go to like a friday wow. or saturday night opening weekend you'll probably run into that um, if yeah. you're going to any other night screening, you'll usually get the applause and the woo when she steps in the puddle. And then during the day, you it, mileage may vary. I clap. I'll always do a little like woo because um, I love it. it, it, it she makes my life better. It's like a little AMC golf makes clap. Better. Yeah, it's, just, it's not like a rousing applause. I mean, sometimes it will be. Fableman's opening night was nuts. People caught up on their feet um, for <laughs> it ad Crazy. because it was also in 70 millimeters. So people were like, Whoa. yeah, I don't know. Anyway. That is our draft. It was a long one, but it was a fun one. We had some great stories shared. Um, Insidious last key, man. Um, so this is uh, where you can find everyone. Chad, we'll start with you really quickly going around counterclockwise. Where can they find you, Chad? Yo, check out Picture This. It's a really great show where Dylan and I watch like every Best Picture nominee known to man. And I, I, it'll end one day, but they keep coming up with these nominees. But I don't know. Maybe if the, that... Uh, 
that strike doesn't end, maybe we won't get any more nominees. We'll see. Um, but uh, and the strike, um, but um, in a good way, I mean. Yeah. Um, going on to the other things, check out my channel, Chadwick Webb, where we rank stuff. Um, mm -hmm. Carrie and I are about to start like doing reviews, and we have other shows in mind and and things like that. But I'm not going to announce anything specifically. I'll just drop it. But you know, uh, whenever I you know can find time to edit things but um yeah um check out the the rankings dylan's been on there carrie's been on there um go over to the uh nerd entertainment network check out uh, a show that carrie and i do with our buddy hunter who i mentioned uh here uh in this very draft um, make hunter clean up your messes people <laughs> where it's called uh welcome to prime time we talk horror we rank uh, episodes of uh, buffy the vampire slayer because it's our favorite show um and we we've been doing a lot of brackets trying to figure out what's the best horror movie ever made so um if you like brackets you know all that stuff to horror uh check that out um and check out my letterbox and my my blog that i need to post other stuff too but it's called clear eyes full heart reviews dot wordpress.com this was great nina where can they find you on the socials social media uh, I'm on Instagram, Nina Randazzo underscore official, and uh, I post on TikTok often, uh, Nina dot Randazzo, and I hope to start a YouTube channel. I'm kind of, kind of working on it. I don't know. It's just, it's a big commitment. I feel like. Oh yeah, oh yeah. You're telling me. <laughs> um, thank you, Nina, for doing this. I know you were stoked to join us finally, and not just vote on the polls. Uh, speaking of guys, the polls are up on Facebook now. Uh, at the time of airing, you all. It's not up for y'all now, but uh, oh. reminder, we cannot vote for our own. So Nina can't vote for her own. Kelsey, same. Role. Kelsey can't vote for anything because she doesn't have Facebook. But you know what I mean. Um, Nina, thank you so much for joining. Hope we have you again on if you'd like to be. Kelsey, where can they find you? Um, you can find me on Instagram at Kelsey A. Kilpatrick. I guess I should have led with Marvelous Movie Mondays. You can find me on the podcast, Marvelous Movie Mondays. Uh, but more importantly, I just changed my TikTok. So my TikTok is at Kelsey A. Kip. Kilp. Whoa. That's how you spell my last name. Kilp. K L. Oh, so is it like a different TikTok entirely or just No, 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 no. It's the same TikTok. It's just not cause anymore. I'm so rebranding. So I have to change all the graphics and stuff? Okay, gotcha. Yeah, I'm telling you right now, live here on the draft day, that you have to change everything. Um, but anyway, you can find me on TikTok at Kelsey A. Kilp. Yep, and you can find Chad and Kelsey also on the Dill Pickle Movie Network TikTok because we have a TikTok there too. Um, oh, Carrie, yeah. where can they find you? Uh, I think Chad already mentioned all my stuff. Cool. Awesome. Well, uh, y'all will be back around the channel in no time. It's a pleasure having you all as always. And uh, everyone go vote on the poll and vote for who had the best lineup of horrible things about movie theaters. And of course, we do still love movie theaters at the end of the day and we are trying to make them better. That's why we did this. And uh, we hope you enjoy your next day at the movies. Hope we don't distract you with these pet peeves. Uh, and have a great rest of your nights.